You want a career that will transform your life while you change the lives of others by helping them live well. With a health or exercise sciences degree from IUPUI School of Health and Human Sciences, you will gain an in-depth understanding of the healthcare industry while preparing you for a variety of graduate and professional programs in health. And with Indy as your classroom, you will have clinical options within leading hospitals right in our backyard, as well as a degree from Indiana University, reputable leaders in the healthcare industry. It all starts here. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. After the Marine Corps, I was diagnosed with PTSD and became homeless for 15 years. Like a hermit living on the street, I just existed. I came to Wheeler Mission. Wheeler operates on a culture of kindness. Going through their programs reminded me that my meaning in life is to serve God. God set me free from anxiety and depression. Before Wheeler, I just existed, but today I live. Sprinkles if you got them. Jack's Donuts, find a location near you now. Hey, conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? The conductor only plays his favorite. Woo! I get her! No, no, no! You see what I did? Yeah, Come yeah. on! Good afternoon. My name is Jay Jones. I'm the commissioner of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference and we're excited that you joined us for today's webcast. We're thrilled to have this relationship with Indiana SRN and we're excited to show you the game of the week each week, showcasing some of the best small college football around the Midwest. We hope that you'll continue to watch and let us know what else you might want to see. You can go to www.heartlandconf.org to see stats, game recaps, and other information around the league. Until then, enjoy today's webcast. It is week two of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference football season. Welcome to Franklin College this afternoon. It's the Grizzlies looking to go to 2-0 in conference play. They'll be hosting the Ravens of Anderson looking for their first win of the season. This afternoon's game is brought to you by Burner Electric, serving greater Indianapolis and the surrounding counties. Also by the Morales Group, building better futures one story at a time. Piper Logistics, from warehousing to transportation, we do it all. And by Reynolds Farm Equipment, serving our customers and the community since 1955. Great to have you with us this afternoon. It is homecoming here at Franklin College. Troy Derangowski, along with my broadcast partner, in fact, this young man, why do I always get stuck with the good-looking guys on these days <laughs> like that? Jarrett Lewis joining us here this afternoon as well. Great to have you with us. And Jared, I'll tell you what, interesting game from a standpoint. The conference early in the year, 
Didn't see a whole lot of wins, and now that we're in conference play, these teams want to get off to a good start. Now, we know Franklin got a win last week. The Anderson Ravens are trying to rebound here today, and we're going to talk some details here in a moment. But this is really a pivotal game for Anderson to try to get on the winning side. It sure is. It's been a struggle, like you said. Both these teams really still trying to find their groove, and Anderson especially trying out different things, different quarterbacks, different skill guys. A really young team on this roster yeah. for Anderson. We're going to see a lot of underclassmen, a lot of freshmen getting to start. Really, this is a pivotal moment. You know, We're getting into October now. You know, weather's starting to change. It's starting to feel more like football season, yeah. really uh, specifically. And getting that win early on in conference play is huge. It, it can really set you up for the rest of conference play, and that's who these teams are going to be facing off with is other teams in the heartland. So a, a win here would be pivotal. Doing it on the road would be even bigger. This crowd, is, is a, it's a huge turnout for Franklin. It, Anderson could really play a huge spoiler. Yeah, they certainly can. Well, and we'll talk more about Anderson coming up here in a couple of moments. And offensively, they are really struggling. And those are some times where you need some offense. You already mentioned how they're going to see some different faces here today. But you look on the other side, and this is a Grizzlies team. They got off to a slow start in their first three games. And we'll talk more about that in a moment as well. But then they turned it around last week and got a win. And we'll talk about some of their key players. But offensively, they can be very dominant. Offensively, they're, they're pretty good. And they have Kai Ross in his sophomore season now who – Started as a freshman last year, looked terrific. He's now more familiar with this system. This is a team that can score 26 points per game, although their defense still needs some work. They're giving up 41 and a half. But you look at Ross's numbers here as the sophomore. This is a passing offense, 244 yards per game. They're going to put it through the air, but he does have a good option in that backfield. If his weapons on the outside are, aren't open, he's got a good sophomore counterpart in the backfield with him. Yeah, no doubt about it. This guy right now is playing very, very well. When you talk about Garrett Cora out of Tri-West High School, young man, 5'10", 175, just a sophomore, but this guy is really, really running the football well. He exploded on the scene last year as a freshman. Him and Ross both have just been clicking from the start. There are his numbers over 400 yards rushing through four games, so he's averaging 100 yards a game. He is a tremendous asset to have to balance out this offensive attack, which is averaging almost 400 yards a game. Cora, like I said, tremendous freshman year. He, he's looking to finish off this sophomore season even better. Well, Franklin coming in after that win last week, and uh, it was a big win. They beat Bluffton at Bluffton 37-27. You mentioned uh, certainly the way that Cora ran last week. I mean, he had a huge, huge day, 37 carries. 226 yards and a touchdown. It was named the Offensive Player of the Week. Well-deserved, for sure. Well-deserved, for sure. And, you know, kind of like we said from last year, how this these two guys kind of came together real smoothly in the backfield. He is putting together games like this, where if he is called upon, he can put together 37 carries. He's going to be the guy that they, if they're going to need tough yardage, he's going to be the one that they look to. And you know, hopefully you don't have instances where he's run it, running it 30 times a game. You don't want that every single game, but it is nice to have a guy like that. And to be a sophomore and be able to do that, really tough kid, tough runner. He's going to be fun to watch. You know, we have two talented Jarrett's in the stadium today. <laughs> one Jarrett Lewis, the other one Jarrett Gibson, the wide receiver for the Grizzlies. He's having an excellent year, 20, or I should say 33 reception, 358 yards, and he'll be a big target today. How about the sophomores and Ross and Corey? and then you have the experience on the outside. These weapons are tremendous for Kai Ross, Jarrett Gibson being one of them, being the senior, a guy who knows the system so well, one of their leading target guys at the wide receiver position. But the, the weapons that Ross has are, are really good. It's not just Gibson. A lot of other experienced players, Spencer Wright and Dylan McKinney, two juniors that are going to get a, a lot of looks this afternoon. Ross and the rest of the offense, they really have a lot of good options. And by the way, don't forget Gibson can also run the football, so watch him get some carries here today. We'll talk about the Ravens coming up in a couple of moments right here on Indiana SRN.
Welcome back to Franklin College. A beautiful day. In fact, weather-wise, it feels like football weather, like you said. And Sean Crawl is with us this afternoon as our sideline reporter. Let's go downstairs to Sean. Thank you very much, guys. And, Troy, first off, I'd like to thank you for lumping me in with the good-looking guys that you get put with. You're in the very booth. welcome, I yes. I appreciate that. Hey, <laughs> it is homecoming here, like they said. It is a beautiful day out here, currently 55 degrees. The leaves are turning. It is jam-packed with alumni and parents. It is a fantastic atmosphere, and I'm not sure where else you'd rather be than right here today for Heartland Collegiate Athletic Football on HCAC.TV. Back to you, fellas. All right. Thank you, Sean. And there you see the Grizzlies making their way to the sideline. We were talking a little bit about the Anderson Ravens earlier. And when you're looking for that quarterback, and that's the one thing right now, Anderson, they need a stable quarterback. And Roosevelt Norfleet is going to get the start today. Doesn't have some big numbers because he hasn't played a whole lot so far. So this is kind of a big stage for him. Yeah, and, and we may see Nathan Clayton end up playing quarterback also. We saw both those guys getting reps in the pregame. Ravens are about to come out onto the field at the moment. But it is an interesting quarterback situation. They're still trying to figure things out. With Norfleet, who's a freshman, and then here's Clayton as the junior and his numbers so far this year. This offense just really has been struggling, and it hasn't all been on the quarterback position. We don't want to say that, but they have been trying to figure out their rhythm, their flow, how exactly can we maximize our potential. They lost a couple of key guys offensively to graduation last year, so with Norfleet and Clayton trying to pick up that rhythm with their weapons on the outside, we mentioned it's a young team. They're going to start a lot of freshmen on the offensive side of the ball you know you're hoping for a good start a good opening drive and of course on defense they've got to get some stops today they have one of the better defensive backs in the conference and this is a young man you see him right there number one that will say his name a lot today yeah a man I'm actually very familiar with uh, both Eastern Hancock alums but Caden Satello really coming onto the scene he's not a big kid either and that, that's what makes him so special is his effort his heart how he plays the position he's, he's just a really tough kid for his size and he's going to come down and try and make a lot of tackles at the strong safety position a, a tremendous asset in that secondary for Anderson. You know what, it must be your day. We've got two talented Jarrett's, you're all good looking, and then all this Eastern Hancock combinations. It's it, You better get it. Well, you do buy a lottery ticket now and then. I know that for sure, oh, right? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. I believe there's uh, uh, exactly three Eastern Hancock uh, former players on this Anderson team. So you, you joked earlier, it's kind of the, uh, they're kind of the combine, or they're, they're the... Uh, the, the pipeline. The yeah. pipeline, exactly, from from Eastern up here to uh, to Anderson. You see the coin toss and the captain's meeting right now. Let me ask you real quick. Uh, Anderson's got to get off to a good start today. They're only averaging three points per game. Franklin's probably going to play the run a lot today because Anderson is going to have to throw the football, but with the new quarterback in there with less experience, what is, what is Anderson really going to have to do? They want to control the clock today and, and just keep the ball as much as they can? For sure, and keep things simple too. You, know, you, don't want, you don't have to throw the whole playbook out there. Work on those plays that you know uh, work very well for you. Keep things simple. Run the quick hitches, the quick slants, You know, just simple dive plays to start things off. See just how much your guys want to play, and hopefully they're, they're all ready for this game and you have a good start to this ball game where you are controlling the ball, controlling the clock, and you're starting to shift all the momentum away from the homecoming fans that are bringing all the juice for Franklin. You want to shift that away over to your side of the field. Give you an idea, the Ravens this year only 39.5 yards on the ground, 161 through the air, and averaging just 3.5 points per game, meanwhile giving up nearly 46 per game on the other side of the ledger. It's a Grizzlies team that is averaging 26, but defensively they've been burned a couple of times this year because they were giving up now 41 points per game. Both defenses are, you know, really struggling, like you said. And as you get later in towards the season, you start playing conference play, games start to get closer. You know, it, yeah. you throw out the records, you throw out the numbers, games just do start to get closer and much more low scoring. We could see something like that here today. We'll take a timeout as we will come back in a few moments and talk about this matchup as we continue 
It's the Ravens as well as the Grizzlies in just a few moments. The kickoff coming up in a moment right here on Indiana SRN. Hey folks, good to be with you for tonight's game. My name is Andy Simpson and I'm a licensed IHSAA football official and welcome to Friday Night Football powered by Indiana SRN. On behalf of the 340 football officials, the IHSAA, the crew here at Indiana SRN, we hope you enjoyed tonight's game and more important, don't forget to subscribe to the Indiana SRN YouTube page. As you're watching tonight's contest, I'm going to show you a few of our signals that will help you better understand the information we are trying to convey. Touchdown. Safety. First down. Holding or illegal use of hands. Encroachment or offsides commonly known. False start or illegal formation on the offense or a free kick scrimmage violation. Face mask. Intentional grounding. Roughing the passer. Clipping, illegal shift, illegal motion, illegal block, pass interference by the offense or the defense, delay of game, and the one signal we dislike and you as fans don't like seeing, unsporting. We'd like to thank everyone for tuning in tonight and following us on CBN and SRN. You can also tune in to the Football Weekly Show and coaches show every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. on indianasrn.org. Finally, if you've ever thought about becoming a IHSA www.ihsaa.org and click on the officials tab or call the IHSA office at 317-846-6601. Now, sit back and enjoy the game. This broadcast is copyrighted by Indiana SRN and the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference for the private use of our audience. The use of pictures, videos, and audio without the expressed written permission of the Heartland Athletic Conference is prohibited. We will see Anderson get the football first. What do you want to see on that first drive here this afternoon if you're the Ravens? Yeah, kind of how we alluded to it right before the break, just keep things simple. Y you know, don't try to get too flashy, too fancy. Don't try to get it all in this first opening possession. Put together a nice, solid drive. Get your fans into it. Make things a little bit more interesting. Two players back. One of those will be Julian Holguin. He is from Richmond, Indiana. Short kick from the 20-yard line and a return and a big fella running across the 32 near the 33-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 now for the Ravens. Their first possession of the ball game. Let's take a look at the Ravens offense here this afternoon and of course uh, the focus will be a lot on number 17 Roosevelt Norfleet goes about 6 2 207 I was watching him throw earlier has a pretty good arm but again not much experience coming to this one here today and Julian Holguin has had a pretty good season so far one of the favorite targets for Norfleet and he's in the slot to start off Antoine Gavin will be the starting running back. Ravens first down and 10. Gavin will get the call. He'll get a couple of there and be stopped at about the 35. Let's go to Sean. Thanks, guys. A couple of things real quick. The two ladies out at the center field of uh, the, the field for the coin toss were the chairs of the 50th year reunion of the 1972 Franklin class. And the men's chorus sang, and a member of that was Jason Arbogast, an offensive lineman from Mississippi in full uniform. That is fantastic. Second down. Of course, Sean will keep us updated throughout the afternoon. Norfleet will put Johnson in motion from right to left. He comes set. The pitch now to the outside. And big tackle from behind at the 40-yard line. Gavin only made a couple of yards on that one. Let's take a look at that Franklin defense. And 
again, they've had their problems this year, but they've got some good quickness and some guys up front that can really play. Cody Wilkerson at the linebacker position. He was huge when we saw him last year, and one of those leaders right in the middle of the defense, getting that play from the defensive coordinator and relaying it to the rest of his teammates. Tremendous leader for the Grizzlies defense. Third down, four receivers in, one set back off the hash mark left, Norfleet to throw, sideline, intercepted at the 50-yard line and a great start defensively for Franklin as Norfleet is picked off. And in on the interception was Kahari Jackson, the cornerback, and already a turnover for the Ravens. I'm not sure if it was miscommunication between Norfleet and his intended target, but I think his receiver wanted it back shoulder, and he threw it too much away from the sideline, just threw it right to the defender. So the Grizzlies' excellent field position, first down and 10 at the Anderson 49-yard line. Kai Ross, the starting quarterback, run over the right side, big hole, 40, 35, up the right sideline, 25, finally knocked out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. And let me tell you what, Garrett Cora ran for all those yards last week. The way he's starting today he might top that from a week ago. Just a huge hole and a good first play to kick things off. Cora's got a lot of speed. He gets into that second level, and it's going to be a foot race. Spencer Wright, the lone receiver to the right side. Handoff will go to Cora around the right side, and not much this time. Good pursuit defensively as Anderson gets the stop there. You're looking at maybe a half a yard loss, so it'll be second down. Up front, you have Corwin, Case, Hacker, Fry, and Christopher. Christopher, big guy, 6'4", 320 off that right side. So you can see why they like running to the right. Kai Ross will take the high snap. Cora out in the flat, 15, cut up field, the 5, and just like that, touchdown for the Grizzlies. And they're on the board, 6 to nothing. Made it look awfully easy. Nobody picked up Cora out of the backfield. He was responsible for all three of those plays, and it took just three plays for Franklin to go the 49 yards and get an opening score. Well, I'll tell you what, that was pretty quick as Derek Baldwin will come in, the sophomore, to attempt the extra point. And the Ravens will already have their back against the wall here in the opening quarter of play. Good snap. And the kick is on the way. Into the wind, it is good. Grizzlies lead it 7-0. At Morales Group Staffing, we are all about building better futures. And during these times, we are working hard to put people to work. We are now hiring for hundreds of jobs with pay up to $17 an hour. Visit our website at moralesgroup.net or text JOBS, J-O-B-S, to 317-472-7600 to apply now and get hired today. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at IndianaSRN. Jared, if you the Anderson Ravens, you might be in a little bit of shock and how many times we see a turnover turn into a score. But if you're Franklin, all the momentum just now on your side. Yeah, they looked really good. Just huge hole in that first play that opened up for Cora. And like we said, his speed, once he bursts through that initial hole, he's going to be a tough guy to bring down in the secondary. Short kick taken inside the 15, looking for a return to the near sideline 30. Gang tackled near the 33-yard line, and that's where Anderson will take over first and 10, their second possession of the ball game. Trayvon Hegler right on the return. He is out of Mount Vernon, and so I hate to say it, we're so early in the ball game. I think this is kind of a big possession right here for the Ravens, isn't it? And the first possession wasn't terrible. You you got your skill guys in, involved. On the first two plays, it was Antoine Gavin, the freshman, who seems to be a tremendous athlete. You get him the ball in space, and he was able to, to make do with it. But just that interception, you want to see a quick bounce back. You have to have 
kind of a mind of a goldfish. You got to forget about that as quick as possible if you're Norfleet. All right, first down, football again at the 34 yard line, handoff up the middle, and not much there again against that Grizzly defense. On the carry once again, Hegler right. Those guys up front for Franklin, they're not really big, but they are very quick, and they let those linebackers come in and help make the stop. So a gain of about two, it'll be second down and eight. Ravens now will go trips to the left. They'll move their tight end to the near side. That's Taz Garrett with 13 receptions this season. Hash mark to the right. Hand off, big time hit right up the middle. 93, Isaac Lawrence met him with authority. That's a large man that just met Hegler right, right at the line of scrimmage. 285, he's only six foot. That's, you can see him right there. That's a hard guy to move. Mm. And Lawrence, too, the way he was able to shed the blocker, if he doesn't make that move, it looked like there was potential for a hole to go through for Hegler right. Back in the ball game, Julian Holguin leads the team in receptions. He was not in on that last play, and looks like there is a flag down, and there is, and an illegal substitution on the field against the Ravens, so it's going to back him up even further. Put the football at the 29-yard line, and this Franklin defense fired up early. Now so you put your pin your ears back, come after Norfleet right here. Empty backfield, trips to the left, two receivers to the near side, hash mark to the right. Norfleet has time as he's looking, looking, pumps and then throws it and overthrows his intended receiver, Ryan McGuff, at the 43-yard line, and he was wide open right there. And he fell down initially. He thought he got pushed. He's looking for a flag. Coach Rock is looking for a penalty marker down also, and he was wide open. I thought he was going to be able to still make that catch even though he hit the turf. Jared Gibson, one of the two back, along with Derek Thompson now for Franklin, and they will have excellent field position right here. As the Ravens on fourth down and long will have to punt the football away. Wind will be behind the punter, so that is good news for the Ravens here. If they can get a little distance on this kick. A wobbly kick right down the middle, and there will be a return and out to about the 44-yard line. That was Derek Thompson on the return. First down Grizzlies, and again with excellent field position. And that last drive again, you know, not a terrible drive by Anderson. The penalty didn't help out either, but that last play, pretty good protection for Norfleet. He actually had to double pump it. On that, on that second pump, I thought he was going to get taken down, but pretty good protection. Lawrence was trying his best to get into the backfield again, and unfortunately he still falls incomplete. McKinney to the near side. They'll look to throw, that is Ross, puts it to McKinney, right on the numbers, 25-20. Foot race to the end zone, touchdown. One play for Franklin, they had one and one coverage on the near side, and Dylan McKinney out of Evansville North High School, and it is all of a sudden 13 to nothing. Just like that in the blink of an eye, 56 yards for McKinney, and he beat his man right at the line of scrimmage. Well, Franklin saw something, and when I saw McKinney come to the near side, I wasn't thinking they would throw that way, but McKinney, as you said, beat him right off the line of scrimmage, and now the extra point attempt by Baldwin is on the way, and it is good. Franklin putting the lightning offense together early. They lead it 14 to nothing. My name is Brittany. A little thing I love about the Egg White Grill is the toasty English muffin. It's toasted perfectly. It's just a little crispy, but not like hard crispy, but just crispy enough that when you bite into it, everything is perfect. <laughs> My name is Curtis, and I love the Egg White Grill because the egg itself, it's like soft and fluffy, like a pillow. I, and I, and I, I would eat my pillow, but I'd eat <laughs> the, the Chick-fil-A breakfast egg white sandwich for sure. They say nice guys don't finish first. So maybe it's time to reconsider what it means to be first. <laughs> it's 
about being your best, but knowing you could be even better. It's being present, but respectful of history. You sure you want to make that move? It's donating something more valuable than money. It's believing in yourself and something bigger. It's coming from different families, but treating each other like brothers. It's not just being a man, it's being a mason. Well, Jared, I mentioned a little bit ago, just a lightning quick offense right there for Franklin. And, and now Anderson is behind the eight ball big time here in the opening quarter. And that's pretty good recognition. Ross and with McKinney. McKinney in his speed, his good first move, able to get behind his guy just like that. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage on the near side, way too easy for Ross and McKinney. Higgler right on the return, takes it to the outside, gets pulled down from behind at about the 36-yard line. Let's go to Sean for a scoreboard update. Fellas, some other games on the docket in the HCAC. Manchester and Rose Holman are scoreless, as is Defiance and Mount St. Joseph. But an early score in the Hanover game as well. Hanover with an early touchdown leads Bluffton 7-0. to zero. Back to you. All right, thanks, Sean. We'll keep you updated all afternoon on games around the conference. So Anderson with the football for just the third time here today. They've had two drives, an interception, and then the punt and the quick score. So they put themselves in a big hole. Holguin in motion. He'll take the handoff around the left side. He'll get about two, maybe three on the carry before he's brought down there. There's another guy who you really want to get involved. We've seen some pretty good moves whenever Hegler Wright has had the football. His kickoff returns have set up Anderson in decent field position, but you can't forget about Holguin either. Try to get him involved in any way you can. Gavin now the lone setback. Holguin, one of two receivers to the near side. Norfleet will throw, puts it in the air, and can't hit his receiver. Had a step on the defensive back, but it falls incomplete. That was Caleb Byers out of New Pal. And just like that, it's already third down. Well, that's twice now. We saw the missed opportunity on the last possession when the receiver fell down. And then they run a little rub route, a little crossing on that far side, Byers was running the inside route. Then they meshed about five yards down the field. He actually, Norfleet had his option and wide open. He missed his man over the middle. Gavin, the lone setback along with Norfleet. Big third down play. Here comes the rush, and Norfleet goes down, sacked back at the 30 yard line as he got hit immediately. Bo Hess, the linebacker on the outside, the sophomore, gets the sack. Franklin hasn't been shy about bringing the pressure. They know they can bring guys like Hess off the edge, and he wasn't even picked up, I don't think. Just came clear right from the blind side of Norfleet, and immediately Norfleet had to look to retreat. He was unable to get out of the grasp of Bo Hess. Jarrett Gibson, Derek Thompson are deep, and it looks like Franklin's going to have pretty good field position again right here. And nearly blocked. Line drive, kick, end over end will get by... The return man there, Gibson, and it rolls all the way inside the 15, so that turns out to be a pretty darn good punt. Really good punt from Mateo, and hopefully now you can see Anderson get a stop. You pin them back as deep as you can inside the 15. I mean, force, force Franklin in, into a third and long at least. Yeah, you know? and, well, and I was going to say, th this first time they've worked with this kind of field position, so for the defense, this is a huge plus. So Kai Ross out of Tri-West High School. The touchdown and one pass the last time. Fumbles the handoff, and he's going to take a big loss. I'm not sure at that stage Ross was going to fake the handoff, and Cora knocks the ball out of his hands. And so that's a huge loss inside the 10. Here is the Anderson defense. And we talked about Sotelo, their defensive back, the strong safety, and the input he has been on that defense so far this year. Handoff, big hole right side, almost got it all back at once is Garrett Cora. And here is that Franklin offense. Of course, you see Kai Ross and Garrett Cora right there, the two guys that are just simply explosive. Give some props to those five guys up front so far because Cora's runs, he did have 
that run that went for zero, but he's also gone for 34, and that one went for nine. Looking to throw his Ross over the middle. Ball caught. It'll be a first down and more across the 25 out to about the 27-yard line. Jarrett Gibson. Gibson will play in the outside. He'll run the football, and he got a first down. Pretty deep crossing route from Gibson. These Anderson DBs are playing off of the receivers. They know the threat that they are to, to throw it deep with their speed. They want to give them an, as much room as they can. But uh, you give them too much room, and they're wide open over the middle. Ross rolling to his right. Has a man open. Ball caught, 45 out to about the 49. That's Jake Tharp, who just checked into the ball game. And quickly, they're almost to midfield. And quickly, Kai Ross has already reached the century mark in passing yards. Watch how wide open these guys. All that shifting from the Anderson defense, they were going towards the run, towards the offensive line movement. Meanwhile, all the receivers are starting on that end of the field and working their way across the field. Nobody catches them. Nobody picks them up. First down football located at the 48-yard line. Ross. Now rolling to his left, throws downfield, has a man at the 40, ball caught, another first down, ball came loose. Let's see if he gets it back, no, a fumble after the catch. And Anderson gets a big break on that one. Coming out of the pile was Drake McLaughlin, the linebacker out of Logansport. And that's what the defense needed right there. And some chippiness going on as well between a couple of players, they get separated quickly. Well, way to respond after it's the comeback route run by the receiver, and it was really good timing between Ross and him, and but able to respond after giving up so much yardage. You just rip it in there, don't give up on the play, and you give your offense now a chance. Dallas, take that back. That's going to be Dawson Dallup as the catch made out in the flat and a first down run after the catch. And that's going to be Zyquan Williams. I was going to mention the fumble was actually made again by Dawson Dallup. So a first down for the Ravens. They'll have trips to the left side. The pass out on the flat. Holguin will make the catch. He goes upfield and he'll get near the 49-yard line as Anderson gets quickly to the line of scrimmage and try to get that tempo offense going a little bit here in the first quarter. And that's the first completion that Norfleet has seen so far. Get it out of your hands quickly. Get it to a skill player like Holguin to where he can make as much as he can after the catch. Zycon Williams has single coverage here to the near side. Norfleet to throw fires and it went behind Keys. So I'm not sure if it was Keys the intended receiver. Or was it Caleb Byers? It didn't hit either one of them, so it'll be third down. So this is another big third down here for the Ravens. That is Williams to the near side. See what the Ravens can do here is North Fleet. Has two receivers split to each side. Third down and long. Here comes the blitz again. And Norfleet gets away, throws, ball caught near side. It's going to be very close to a first down. Keys makes the reception, and Norfleet was on his horse getting away from the pressure, and it is a first down. Norfleet had to shake about three or four different guys to find the big tight end, Keys. Keys was the one who opened things up on the kickoff and was bowling his way down the field. Empty backfield. Trips to the left, quick throw to the near side. That's going to lose yardage here as Zycon Williams is brought down for a loss of about a yard or so. So now it'll be second down. The good news is if you're the Ravens, at least you're holding onto the football right now. You've had it longer in this possession than you've had in the first two. But now second down, and let's call it 11. Norfleet puts Holguin in motion, fakes the handoff, looks downfield, now throws to the sideline. Holguin makes the catch at the 40. Flag is down. 
back at about the 47 yard line. It may go against the Grizzlies. I think it's it could be rough in the pass, sir. It came from the head official when Northfleet got tackled, and he got tackled from behind by Wilkerson. And that is going to be the case. So the pressure has been constantly coming into Norfleet, and he's been able most of the time able to get it away. That time hicking up with Holguin. And you tack on the penalty yardage now, and Anderson's in pretty good field position to try and score. And this, again, by far their best field position of the day, all the way down to the Franklin 23-yard line. So for Roosevelt Norfleet, after that early interception, now is the offense going after that big penalty. First down and 10. And they're just three yards shy of the red zone. Norfleet pops, and then the ball comes loose, and Franklin gets it back. What a big-time hit. And he went down. Bo Hess leveled him right when he was ready to release the football, and Norfleet slow to get up. And, boy, the second turnover. Let's go now to Sean downstairs. Fellas, Anderson's king on Jire Ojada, the junior from Carmel, Indiana, set the school record last year with 14 stacks and was a national leader in Division Three. They're double teaming him, and it's opening up holes for Bo Hess to come through in the blitz and wreck havoc. Uh, wow. Wrecking havoc is exactly right because, I mean, that hit, it, one, faked out our cameraman on the pump fake from Norfleet, but how about the the hit that they opted to it was kind of like a, a yeah. <laughs> push like that i mean very strange looking but just hard hitting defense so far from the grizzlies i haven't seen a hit like that since uh, monday night raw it was uh one of those shots right in the solar plexus something keith myers might do it'll be second down and eight Ross throws out in the flat, ball caught and brought down yet. Good effort getting to the 34-yard line by his running back, who is going to be a workhorse today, and Garrett Cora. So they give him a gain of three. It'll be third down at about five. Grizzlies really doing a nice job. They're mixing things up on offense. Now they go trips to the near side. Ross will look to the sideline. What change will they make here after getting a look at that Raven defense? Boy, that, and that's a heartbreaker for the Ravens to get that far down the field and then commit their second turnover. But that was a hard, hard hit. Ross to throw. Under throws his receiver. He does not make the catch. Jarrett Gibson tried to sell it that he made it at the 39, but he does not. And the Ravens, will they punt it away right here? It looks like they will. It's actually the first incompletion we've seen so far this afternoon from Kai Ross. And for the first time, we'll also see the punting unit. Already each team has possessed the football four different times. Anderson's about to have their fifth possession here. And we're still in the first quarter. Caden Sotelo. That grad out of Eastern Hancock where Jarrett Lewis starred in his days. And the kick by Boswell. It will take a Anderson Ravens bounce back to near the 41-yard line. And so the Ravens get the stop after the turnover. That's really kind of a win for the Ravens. Get the football back with no score there. And Sotelo is the punt returner this afternoon because Anderson's without Jose Olivo. He's their typical kick slash punt returner a senior who kind of a do-it-all guy and they're missing him this afternoon he separated his shoulder earlier this week so it's next man up but with a guy like Satello, I mean he's also really a do-it-all guy for Anderson now trips to the near side, first and 10. Football at the 41-yard line. Norfleet will now take it himself. Nice gain near midfield. They'll actually put him down at about the 47-yard line. Norfleet came into this game with just 16 yards passing. As, again, we talked about it in the pregame that Nathan Clayton out of Phoenix had been the starting quarterback, but he threw seven interceptions 
this year. So the Ravens decided to go with Norfleet and see what he could do here this afternoon. Second down at about four. Football again at the 47. Grizzlies showing blitz. Here they come. Norfleet will hand it off. And it's going to be to near the 49-yard line. Looked like that may have been Gannon on the carry. So it's going to be third down and about three now. Franklin seems to be bringing the blitz just about half of the defensive plays are bringing five or more. We'll see what they opt to do here, third and short. I think Anderson, I don't think they're comfortable running the football to try to pick up this first down. We have not seen their leading rusher, Andre Moore, yet this afternoon. Holguin in motion. He'll take the handoff around the left side. He dives ahead. He's going to be short. They're going to mark him down about a half a yard short of the 50-yard line. The second time that Holguin has carried the football there for the Ravens. And now you're at fourth down. Do you go ahead and go for it here? I think so, and it looks like that's going to be the case. Both times Holguin has caught the jet sweep, has gone towards the Anderson sideline, towards the short side of the field. Now I think you're in a situation where you could probably opt to run it. All right, big fourth down here for the Ravens. Holguin in motion. They'll run it up the middle, and guess what? They did not get it as Antoine Gavin is actually going to be stopped just shy the 50-yard line, and a good stop there for the Grizzlies. Well, Franklin was no doubt sensing the run. You can see with the formation, they're trying to jumble everybody up. Wide receivers close towards the center. Franklin sensed it all the way. Just hasn't been, it hasn't been there running the football yet. Gavin on his four carries only has eight yards. That front line of Franklin so far, they, they came to play. So Kai Ross back out on the field once again. Cora the setback, he'll get the call. Finds a hole across the 45, down to about the 43 yard line. And it could be the final play of this opening quarter unless they decide to get a quick one going here. Gibson stays in the ball game along with McKinney. They'll be the two receivers to the right. And once again, it'll be Cora, the lone setback. Ross takes the snap, has plenty of time, throws to the sideline, picked off. Intercepted, Ravens have a return inside Franklin territory and a turnover and a big, big interception. And, guess and there's who? Sotelo. Guess who? It's Sotelo. He's dropping back in coverage, and he's just watching Ross, his eyes the whole way. It's deep sideline routes that the Grizzlies are running, and Sotelo has a tremendous break on the ball. Ross is looking that way the whole time, and Sotelo just comes out of nowhere looking for Gibson. Good blockers getting out in front for Sotelo for a tremendous return all the way to the Franklin 30. So a big break there for the Ravens. After those two quick scores by Franklin, Ravens have played it even since then. So they got a drive going the last time, got it into the red zone, could not score. And Anderson is going to get a timeout. I think we need a <laughs> we need a timeout to I, I can't believe the amount of drives we've seen already in this first quarter. Anderson is about to start their sixth drive of the first quarter. Franklin's already had five. Here's our telemetry sports replay on that run that scored the first touchdown or near touchdown of the ball game. I want to remind you. Today's game brought to you in part by Telemetry Sports. More than six years, for more than six, Telemetry Sports has been working with the NFL and multiple college football teams as a data and technology provider. Player speeds and accelerations they use are providing us in generated computer vision, the same technology as autonomous vehicles. And as you watch these players, keep in mind that over 18 miles an hour is very fast and impressive for high school and college athletes. 
18.4 he was on that one, so that's pretty good. That's I a, don't know if we've seen 18.4 at the high school level. Cora at uh, the D3 level is awfully fast. Yeah, we had a 20.4 a couple of weeks ago in the Heartland oh, Collegiate that? Athletic Conference. First down to 10 for Norfleet. Play action. And he's going down from behind. There was good coverage downfield. He had nowhere to go. And guess who got him? The big guy from the outside, Ojeda, 6'4", 260. And that's going to do it for the opening period of play in our Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference Game of the Week. Franklin leads it by 14. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Back here at Franklin College as the Anderson Ravens try to get points on the board. We mentioned in the pregame, averaging through their first four games, only three per game. Here comes the blitz once again. Norfleet pumps and then throws to the sideline and wisely throws it away. As Zyquan Williams was his only target, but he saw that defensive back just waiting for him to throw it because he would have come in and picked it off. Norfleet has seen relentless heat and very little time to get rid of the football. That play was designed for him to get it out quick, but it's pretty good coverage in the secondary. He doesn't want to give it right back to Franklin. So wisely opting to just throw it away, third down and long. Have to get to the 20 for the first down. Norfleet out of Fort Wayne Northrop High School. Now play with an empty backfield. Trips to the right, hash mark to the left. And you can see a lot of adjusting on that Franklin defensive line. They may be coming again. Here they come. Norfleet in the pocket, able to get away this time. Throws it. Ball caught. It'll be shy of a first down unless he gets a good push right here. It's going to be awful close. Ryan McGuff on the reception, and he carried several defenders with him. He got a nice push from one of his offensive linemen. It'll bring up fourth and one. They pick up 15. And I think for six or seven of those yards, McGruff was getting a nice push from behind. Yeah, somebody jumped on that pile, too. One of his uh, teammates, other than the offensive lineman, to help you saw Norfleet say something to one of his receivers. That's uh, Byers here on the near side. So Norfleet looking right now, left, throws, and a low throw, and... Well, I tell you what, I watched his delivery in that one, and you could just see he tightened up on that throw for some reason. I think he was kind of shocked at how wide open Gavin was on the flat route. And if he just trusts his instincts that it's going to be there, they're going to be able to hook up, but short arms it, and unfortunately you don't get any points off of that turnover. So they've had another drive. Let's go to Sean downstairs. Fellas, one of the things I'm noticing is Norfleet seems to have some happy feet from the pressure that the Franklin defensive line is putting on him, causing him to make throws like that. He's just shell-shocked. Thank you, Sean. Around the left side on the carry is Dylan McKinney, and McKinney will get a first down. I think Sean's right. When you watch Norfleet in the pocket, he is just dancing and dancing like there's, again, the pressure coming from all sides, and he knows that if he didn't get rid of that football pretty quick, he's in trouble. Well, that previous play before when McGuff got that big push was immediate pressure. He saw three guys in his face. I don't know how he escaped it, but it has just been relentless. Ball thrown out in the flat. It'll be caught by Gibson. Gibson might even lose a half a yard on this one. He, eh, it looks like this near side official will put him at the line of scrimmage, so no gain there. 
Pretty good open field tackle by Aiden Roach from Cascade High School. You know, Franklin, they want to get their guys involved in that way too, whether it's Gibson or McKinney. These guys, they can run the jet sweeps. They have so much speed. McKinney nearly broke through on that far side jet sweep. Second down and 10. Handoff, core left side, bounces to the outside. They held onto a jersey, and that might have slowed him up quite a bit to the 44. He shied for first down by a couple of yards, but tell you what, Core does a great job picking those holes, and once he got to the outside, that's hard to stop. These holes have just been gaping wide open on that right side on Marnie Christopher. He's the right tackle. Alongside him is Adam Free. Those two making it a huge hole a semi-trailer can run through for Cora. How about Ross and Cora when they played at Tri-West? That had to have been a very explosive offense. High snap. Ross will take it himself and gets to the outside before he steps out of bounds, but he got a first down for the Grizzlies. Well, this, see, this has been a while now. They, they scored those two quick touchdowns, but this Grizzlies offense has not been the same type of production that they had early, so I think this might be a big drive for them too. It is, and so far it's looking pretty good. They, twice now their defense has forced Anderson to turn over on downs. Ross to throw, fires over the middle. Ball's going to be caught to the outside 40 and brought down, but a first down near the 37-yard line. That'll be Rias Moore, the tight end out of Brownsburg at 6'1", 2'15". He is a senior. First time we've called Moore's name. He was on the right side, and good job by Ross, able to get it out. He felt the heat get to him, but he knew he had more wide open middle of the field. Kind of a sneaky tight end is Moore. We haven't, like we said, called his name yet, but he's a guy who can make an impact. Grizzlies first down, handoff up the middle. Some tough running here by Cameron Johnson, the senior at 5'9", 187. We'll give him about four on the carry. Boy, and how about the Grizzlies? They're shifting people in and out. A lot of personnel changes here, and I know sometimes if you're a defense you don't realize how quickly some of those new players come in, so the scouting report gets a little bit different. So now the Grizzlies trips to the left. Johnson stays in as the lone setback. Ross gives it to Johnson, trying to get to the outside, puts his head down, turns, and then gets to the 30. After he got hit, spun him around a little bit. He's going to be shy of a first down by about a yard or so. Really tough running by Johnson. What looked to be a play where he's going to get knocked down at the line of scrimmage. He turns it into four or five, and he's going to stay out there. I say let the man continue to eat. Let him set up a new set of downs. So Cora will get a break again. High snap, and guess what? Johnson brought it down, and what a heads-up play. Otherwise, that might have been a fumble. The snap was high for Kai Ross, but Johnson... The sure hands gets the catch, you might say, and the first down. Watch it again. It's really lucky. Just throws the right hand up there to snag it down. And again, regardless of that, the bad snap, the offensive line was still able to fire off the ball and give Johnson plenty of room to pick up the first. By the way, Parker Hacker is the center. Just a sophomore. Another high snap. Ross over the middle. Caught touchdown. Dylan McKinney does it again. And he got wide open over the middle, and the Grizzlies put six more on the board. Second touchdown reception for McKinney. And the Grizzlies just run some nice weaving action. McKinney started as the far receiver, and it was miscommunication in the secondary from Anderson. Satello went with the receiver. That took him away, kind of towards the pylon, and it opened up the middle of the field for McKinney. So now, Balden to attempt the extra point. The kick is on the way, and it is perfect. Franklin puts seven more on the board. They lead it 21 to nothing. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. 
along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. Back here at Franklin College, and yeah, you're wondering where in the world is Keith Myers. He is actually here today. I was selling popcorn down at the concession center. Well, get a little money out of it, too, yeah. yeah. Well, 10%. <laughs> That's good enough. Uh, I, I got something for you in just a couple okay, of minutes. Okay, we'll do that right after the kickoff as Anderson will receive the football for the first time here in the second half where they might get some decent field position off a short kick. The return will come to the near side, 30, 35, 40, 45, and they try to stiff arm and a push out of bounds. And let's go back over to Keith. I know you kind of have a special connection with Franklin College and one of our colleagues from before. Long time uh, guy that worked for us for a long, long time. Sylvia, his wife, is watching today, and uh, we lost Steve McClure. Uh, earlier this year, and, and uh, Steve was the public address announcer uh, for many, many years, worked for Indiana SRN with us, and we lost him and Dick O'Dell just last weekend. Cancer eats up a lot mm. of people, but uh, Sylvia, we love you, and uh, we're dedicating this to Steve. We really appreciate him. Uh, that's why there's a lot of people here today just to uh, celebrate his life, and you talk to the guy that's doing the public address now, and he goes, man, I got some big shoes to fill, but we love you, and we know that Steve is uh, looking down, so just wanted to share that with you, and Sylvia, we love you. All right, thank you very much, Keith Myers, and now Anderson takes over first and 10 at their own 48-yard line, Norfleet. They'll look to run the football over the left side, and there's just not much there. Back to the line of scrimmage. Let's take another look at the score right here. This is beautiful. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see it, but the receivers on that near side, Ross is just waiting for them to get towards the end of their route, and McKinney was the far receiver just weaving together with Gibson, you see, who comes into the picture. Miscommunication by the secondary of Anderson, and it's just an easy pitch and catch between Ross and McKinney. Second down and 10, it was Travis Moon on the last carry. As you take another look at that score, four wide out, hash mark left. Moon gets the call again, gets hit immediately, might get to the 49, and all of a sudden, if you're Anderson, you're third and long again. Let's take a look at this kickoff return as well. A really good return coming towards the left side was Hegler Wright. He's been making some plays in the special teams game. Finding the holes forced out by the kicker. But even with this good field position, it's still another third and long. Prepare for the pressure that the Grizzlies are going to try and bring into the backfield to Northfleet. Northfleet again with four wide outs. High snap, able to bring it down. Here they come. Northfleet able to get away from that pressure. Looks, now heaves it downfield. It's going to be caught inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. And what a throw by Northfleet. And a catch as well for the first down and more. I think that was McGuff. Northfleet, it all starts with him. I don't know how he gets away from Lawrence. But the throw downfield and the adjustment by McGough, too, to make the catch. So now, opportunity here. Norfleet around the right side gets inside the 10 as he's tripped up. Gets to about the 8-yard line. And you're exactly right. It was Ryan McGough who made that nice reception. Let's take another look at it right here. There's Lawrence who comes after him. Also able to get away from Ojada and... McGuff making the adjustment, and he's pumped up about it, too. He wants to see Anderson get into the end zone. So Norfleet knocking on the door as the Ravens trying to get on the board for the first time. Holguin around the right side. He might get a yard out of it. There wasn't much there. Good speed on the outside for that Franklin Grizzlies defense. And now it's third down. And, of course, this is going to be four-down territory. You... You don't have to score here, but it would be nice. You also still have an opportunity to pick up a first down. You see the chain set up. If they get to the one, 
they're able to get a new set of downs, have first and goal. Johnson to the right. McGuff also to the right. Whistles on the field, and this time the Grizzlies want to talk about it. We'll take a timeout. Franklin leads it 21 to nothing. Back here at Franklin College. Let's go downstairs. I believe Sean in a minute. We're going to get him in a little bit because I think he's in an interesting position down in the end zone. But the Ravens trying to get on the board. Here's a big third down. They can get a first down if they get to the one-yard line. But as Jared had mentioned a little bit ago, this is probably four down territory no matter what. Norfleet takes the snap into the end zone, and it's going to be caught for the score. And there he is again, Ryan McGuff, and the Ravens get on the board and now trail it 21 to 6. Norfleet very slow to get up after that pass, but found McGuff in the very back of the end zone. Great route run by him. Hopefully, Norfleet's all right, but that's. Just a huge confidence boost to the away team sideline. Finally, they're into the end zone. So now the extra point attempt. Mateo Jesh will do the kicking. They were one man down on the special teams, and now everybody's out there. Low snap. The kick is on the way, and it is good. So the Ravens on the board for the first time here this afternoon. They trail it, though, 21-7, Franklin on top. They'll get the football back. We're going to go downstairs in a little bit. Sean is roaming the sidelines. I know that Sean moves a little quicker than Keith used to. That's the impressive part because Sean's going end zone to end zone. Keith would only go like to him, the 40 to 40. Yeah, I noticed that too. Yeah. Uh, Sean, Sean's dedicated to the game. And, and yeah, well, here's the other thing. Sean could get from end zone to end zone before Keith could go 40 to 40. That's what was also <laughs> impressive. So, All right, kickoff here for the Ravens. And there will be a return here. Gibson to the outside. Trying to find running room to the 25. And still in his feet, driven out of bounds, just shy of the 30. Let's go downstairs to Sean. Fellas, one of the unique things about this stadium, and I, I don't know if Jerry can get a, a camera shot of it, is the number of people in lawn chairs on the turf behind the end zone. So I went down and I talked to some of them, and they were like, yeah, we just come down and claim our spots. And I said, do, do you get scared at all for a long play? Their response, <laughs> you leave your scared at home when you come down here. They also <laughs> like it because their kids can play behind them in the turf. So love the setup here at Franklin. Back to you guys. Ross will take the snap as the Grizzlies run the football. That is going to be Cam Jennings in the ball game. We haven't seen Garrett Cora for a while. You know, I like that response. We leave our scared at home. What about that, huh? They're dedicated to the game too. I they mean, are? they're and they're it's packed on that inside of the end zone. 
and they just saw a good look at the McGuff touchdown. It came from Anderson, but I'm sure it was still exciting right there in front of them. Ross looking left, rolling right, sideline pass, ball caught, and looks like to me that could be a first down depending on where they spot the football, and he got it. Spencer Wright makes the catch. Let's take another look at the score. You'll see McGuff at the top of your screen. Watch the route he runs. He gets middle of the of the end zone and just cuts it across. Good timing between him and Norfleet. And again, Norfleet took that shot. Hopefully he's still good to go for the rest of it. He has been taking a lot of hits in that backfield. Ross to throw. And this could be a penalty flag. Yes, way back from the back. Judge there. As the interference call, I saw a little early contact there, and I was waiting for the flag myself. How about the arm from that field judge way back there? He threw that from the Anderson 35 all the way up to the 45 where he's standing. Do we have a replay of that? I mean, that, that'd be a big play, wouldn't it? <laughs> but, no, you could, yeah, we could see it way from up here, that off arm going across the receiver. You know, we might have Sean go down and talk with that official and find out if he played football. That's a, that is a good throw. I'm also glad that he saw it from way back there. So, 45-yard line, first down for the Grizzlies. Ross will hand it off. Hole up the middle, across the 45. What a run here by Cam Jennings. He is 6'2", 180 pounds. And he gets the first down to the 39-yard line. We talked about the rotations, how many different guys have been coming in and out for Franklin Jennings and the work that he's been getting these past couple of plays. Shakes the first two or three tacklers, and it's not going to take a bump to the side of him to knock him down. You're going to have to wrap him up or go, go low at his legs to try and bring him down. So another first down, they'll fake the handoff. Roas will roll, and now coming back to the near side, throws it, and then unable to handle the fastball was Jennings. If he takes a little bit off that one, Jennings might have had a better chance to catch the football. Cameron Johnson back in. Jennings will come out. It is amazing how many players the Grizzlies continue to rotate in and out of their offensive unit. So here it is, second down and 10. Football again at the 39-yard line. Ross will give it off up the middle, and that'll be Cameron Johnson to the 36-yard line, and it'll be third down and long. We'll try to check the status of Cora. In fact, here he comes now back out on the field. It's been... An extended break for him with Johnson and now Jennings. Those two splitting carries. Dylan McKinney is back in as well. He, of course, has the two touchdown receptions here this afternoon. Gibson and McKinney to the near side. Third down and about eight. Ross near side ball caught. And on the reception is Gibson. He gets tripped up. I don't think he got the first down, but, I, yep, he just did. So a first down at the 26-yard line. Sotelo coming down to make the tackle, and if he doesn't, I think it could be a touchdown for Gibson. So a touchdown saving attempt from Caden. But Ross and, and the timing with his receivers, he's hooked up with Gibson now four times. Hand off. Nope, it's going to be a keeper by the quarterback, Ross. Inside the 25, we'll call it 24-yard line, and there's some more chippiness going on. And they have to separate a couple of the players. One of those in there was Ison Moss, the cornerback. So it's going to be second down and eight. They'll have to get down to the 15-yard line. Trips to the left. Gibson in the ball game, one of the three receivers on the left side, empty on the near side. Ross to throw, gets rid of it, and the miscommunication on the pattern. Spencer Wright came back, and Ross threw it deeper, and it falls incomplete. It'll be third down. At least you're still in third and manageable. 
And this offense is always dangerous. So many different guys to choose from. They could go to just about anybody. And they're going to continue to spread things out. Two receivers both sides. Cora in the backfield. Right to throw. And he will miss his intended receiver. But we got another flag down. They got Satello this time on the pass interference. Yeah, there wasn't much contact. But I think it was just enough. It knocked Gibson off of his route. It actually almost pulled him to a complete stop. And they're actually going to call holding instead, which I think is more appropriate. It wasn't necessarily a, a push or anything, but just enough contact at the initial hit to knock Gibson off of the route. So that'll mark the football down to about the 14-yard line. And so first down... In the red zone once again for the Grizzlies. Cora, the lone setback. Ross to throw. Flushed out of the pocket as he looks. Throws it toward the end zone. He just got rid of that one before he went out of bounds or potentially taking a sack. You know, everybody talks about you getting the red zone. Well, that ought to be easy to score down here, but you got to remember how much that field will shrink now. Just ask the Denver Broncos. Exactly. Well, it wasn't that exciting on uh, Thursday night. Ask the Colts, too. I mean, <laughs> just <laughs> terrible football, red zone offense, one of the worst the, the league has seen. Hand off to Cora, gives the stiff arm, and he's going to lose some yards on this run. Good pursuit by that Raven defense. Let's go to Sean for an update on our scores. Fellas from around the league early in the second quarter, Mount St. Joseph leads Defiance 28-7, and Hanover is leading Bluffton 27-7. And, of course, Sean will keep us updated on all those scores around the conference. Here we have 21-7. Ross over the middle, and the ball is tipped and almost intercepted. And a late hit, though, and they're going to get a penalty flag the receiver was completely defenseless on that play, and I think they got. Well, this is going to be interesting because the ball is tipped, and Gibson it still isn't up. It's not a good sign. Yeah, he took a shot. The Anderson sideline is irate over the call. Take another look at it right here. Ross standing in the pocket even though it collapses on him. There's the tip. And then, boom, Williams, I think who it was, gave a nice shot. Actually, it was Otto Botang of Anderson who gave a shot to Gibson, which is totally unnecessary. Well, it's going to give the Grizzlies a first down, but more importantly, you're hoping that young man's going to be okay because he really got hit hard. So they called it a targeting. Yeah! And the player's been ejected from the game, too. And I think you're right, it is Otto Batang out of Sanford, Florida, who is now done for the day. And you can see he is not happy. We got an eye on him on the sideline, but he will have to take the old walk out of here and and you see it a couple of times in the NFL where the ball is tipped there's initially a flag thrown but it normally it's pass interference now when the ball is tipped you're allowed to engage with the receiver you're allowed to you know push him around but in an instance like that definitely targeting and good to see that Gibson is up that's a tough kid right there but he took a Really big shot from his blind side. And happy to see that he's up and moving. So the ejection. And now first down and goal from the eight-yard line. Trips to the left. Ross, keeper himself, a hole up the middle, gets inside the five before he's brought down near the three. Again. 
Ravens trying to prevent the fourth score of this first half by the Grizzlies. I like the play call, too, because Anderson, they're going to focus so much on, on guys like McKinney and then the two backs in the backfield, try to fake them out. McKinney split wide left. High snap again. The carry, this will be Cameron Johnson, and he'll get to the two-yard line. They brought in a couple of big guys up front to help block, but it didn't do much good that time. And they also have Jennings out there, so two backs that are much bigger. And the extra offensive lineman on the left side. Ross will hand it off over the left side. Diving ahead. Did he get in? Yes. Touchdown, Cameron Johnson. So a huge penalty against the Ravens. Ends up costing them another six points. And Franklin now leads it by 20. 11 play drive, they go 72 yards. A couple of big penalties that extended that drive. Johnson with the, the runs that he's had, he's had six carries for, for 22 yards and they've been a tough 22 and he's rewarded with the touchdown. Franklin leads it 28-7. You're good at making big announcements. We're having a go! <laughs> We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. There you see the score, 28-7. Sean will have a halftime guest coming up in a few moments. Anderson will get the football. Try to get something on the board before the half after that last touchdown they had that enabled them to get that goose egg off the board. High short kick, and there will be a return. Lance Marshall, the associate director of athletics and the head baseball coach will be our guest at halftime. Let's take another look at the touchdown right here. And that extra offensive lineman they brought in was Brock Veach. Sophomore, you see him there, 79. And that's the side they went to with Johnson. That's the beauty of, of Frank. What we've seen from this offense is they're, they can mix things up. They can run in between the tackles. They can spread things out with their weapons outside, getting everybody involved. So the Ravens will bring Roosevelt Norfleet back out after taking that hard hit on the touchdown pass. Here comes the blitz once again. Norfleet setting up the screen to the near side. Ball will be caught by Gavin, 35, and brought down near the 39-yard line. And he does stay in bounds. So the Ravens will hurry to the line of scrimmage. We'll officially put it at the 38-yard line. Cody Wilkerson was the middle linebacker who was blitzing the last time. Norfleet puts it in the air and nobody is there. Ted Lamson was the closest Raven available, but it was off the mark. And it'll be third and long again for the Ravens. And how close was Bo Hess again to taking a shot into the back of Norfleet? Although he trips, he gets taken out by the turf monster. So third down and seven. They have to get to the 44 for the first down. Norfleet, 
four-man rush gets grabbed from behind and brought down and he will be sacked it's Isaac Lawrence the defensive tackle the junior at six foot 285 and he says feed me yep he starts eating he's been feasting this whole first half there's been so many moments where he's been close to getting to Norfleet. He's got two sacks already. He could very well have four or five. But the man continues to dominate in the middle. I want to remind you, today's game brought to you in part by Serenity Home Care. Serenity Care Services is an Indiana licensed personnel agency and Medicaid waiver service provider here in central Indiana. They're friendly, competent, and an experienced team of caregivers you have been seeking. You can contact them today at serenitycareservices.net. And we also want to thank Tam Sweet and Savory Cafe. Great atmosphere for breakfast or brunch open Wednesday through Sunday, 8 until 2. Tam and your staff waiting to serve you and your family. Try the biscuits and gravy or the quiche. Coach also recommends the BLT with lots of mayonnaise, of course. Tam's located at 6427 Oakland and Road in Indianapolis. So the Ravens will have to punt the football away. And by the way, there's still plenty of time on the clock here for Franklin. And it's going to be a fake. Ravens around the right side, and guess what? The gamble did not pay off, and you have just given Franklin great field position and an opportunity to put more points on the board. Very interesting call. You know, I think if you are going to, if you in your mind decide that you want to go for it, you might as well keep the offense out there and see what you can come away with, run your best play. But I think the better option was to at least force Franklin to start on their own end of the field if they're going to try and score again. So will the gamble, well it hasn't paid off so far and now Kai Ross and the Grizzlies only have 29 yards to go to get points on the board but Franklin is going to have to call a timeout. They had perhaps one too many players on the field. We'll get a score update coming up at halftime for all of you around the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference. We mentioned, of course, a special guest is coming up as well. We'll talk a little bit about We have some numbers we'll try to cover before we go to halftime. You know, Anderson gambles on a play like that I did find it a little bit shocking that they would try to fake punt. Jesh is probably not your best athlete, but you still had seven yards to get a first down, and we have seen the speed of the outside by Franklin, so I guess I was kind of surprised by that. Right, and also Franklin has, now they have the one timeout to work with, um, but still plenty of time, 37 seconds, and with Ross and the way he's been hooking up with McKinney. Twice they've broken out two big plays, 56 for a touchdown, 22 for a touchdown. They're going to play well off of them. Look at the DBs. They're 10 yards off. The throw out in the flat. Ball's caught. He'll get a block and brought down the reception by Dylan McKinney, and they're going to have to hurry up to the line as they will just spike the football as to stop the clock. That's a, a, a play I'm sure that Coach Hensel loves in this offense, and that has plenty of potential with the, with the type of guys that you have. If that busts through, then you're, you're looking at a spot to, to try and score. Now you're in an interesting position because it's third down. You still want to make sure you, you have good time management here now that there's 21.8. Core remains in as the lone setback. Ross to throw, fires, ball caught inside the 20. Brought down immediately. And it will be a first down. Pass to number eight, Jake Tharp. Tharp gets the reception. And after the first down, Ross will just spike it right there. Tharp in there, of course, with Jarrett Gibson getting a little bit banged up on that 
one play and so now that last play that third down play it was it was key to get that first down because you're able to stop the clock for the moment until the, the chains get set and then you go up there to spike it. If you don't pick up the first down there, then you probably ha force your hand, call the timeout, kick the field goal. Ross throws toward the end zone. Touchdown. A flag oh, is down, but it may be, come back. Yeah, I think it might be. I think it might be. McKinney gave that little just enough on that shove to get the separation. Yep. But there's still time on the clock to get some points on the board, but you could see the arm extended. Could have been a first-half hat trick for McKinney and that the way that ball was thrown too I don't know if he doesn't push off I don't think because he kind of gave an extra yard yeah. with the extension enough to reach out and catch that football I think if he doesn't do that I'm not sure he catches it so there you see the official making the call and they're going to go ahead and kick a field goal here it's a huge penalty. Yeah, you're, you're all the way back now to the 31. There you kind of saw it, the off on the left hand extending out. Not enough time to take a shot to the end zone, send out the field goal unit. So Baldwin will attempt a 48-yard field goal here. He has the wind at his back, though the breeze has kind of died down a little bit from earlier today. Good snap, the kick is on the way. Does it have the distance? And it does, 48 yards by Derek Baldwin. How about that? So Baldwin, great job there. And I want to tell you what, that it made it, I mean, it was, it had very little room to clear it. You get another look at it. He got plenty of distance there, and there it is. Just enough. Mm. The, that graphic they show, I think it's on NBC, where they, it says good from. Mm -hmm. So if, if it's a 55-yard field goal, if it goes through afterwards, it may say good from 60, good from 63, or whatever. I think that one was good from 48 and a half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, or 49. <laughs> that one barely squeaks over. So the Ravens will get one more chance with the football, but again, not a whole lot of time remaining. And Baldwin says, yeah, yeah, it no, is what it is. No biggie. Business as usual. And you know, one other thing, you had to put a little more line drive on that than normally you would. So that would be a nice way for the Grizzlies to finish out the first half. As Baldwin teasing up at the 35. See if the Ravens can get a good return here. Kick will go inside the 10 yard line. And you hear the horn going off to end this first half. And still on his feet to the near side. Finally brought down near the 24 yard line. The flag is down on the far side of the field. A lot of the Franklin players were already into the tunnel to go to the locker room. So we got, got a holding penalty on the Ravens, so won't matter now. So we will go to the locker room, Franklin, after that 48-yard field goal with a 31-7 to lead. and. You got to give Franklin a lot of credit. They got out to a fast start, two quick scores. The offense kind of sputtered a little bit. Ravens came back, finally got on the board in that second quarter, but then Franklin coming back and putting more points on there. So I guess if you looked at it on paper, it's kind of how we thought it would be. It was kind of an up and down first half, mostly up for Franklin, the two scores on their very first two drives. And then they followed it up with fumble, punt, interception, but then three straight touchdowns, excuse me, two straight touchdowns, three straight scoring drives. They cap it off with a field goal from Baldwin. That's a good way to go into the locker room on your homecoming. Just everything going the way of the Grizzlies. And of course, now you think about the second half. Grizzlies, after the score, they'll get the football to begin the third quarter. So their offense will be back out there again. And you know, that Raven defense, uh, bottom line, they were out there quite a bit too in that first half. Yeah, they were. And a lot of good plays, but couldn't 
really put together a complete drive and too many fumbles, interceptions also. A lot of stuff they got to clean up. Hopefully you see them finish this game out strong. So your halftime score, Franklin on top, 31 to seven. Again, Sean will be back in a few moments uh, with our special guest. We'll have an update on some of the other scores from around the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference. It again is homecoming here at Franklin College. And so a lot of the fans are here today. The alumni back to see the football game today, and I know they've got some other things going on around campus as well. Certainly a big crowd here today on a beautiful day here in Franklin. It is beautiful. I mean, you you compare all the Heartland schools and just the setting, the overall setting. This one is top two, top three at least, I think, in the conference. When, when you just look around, all the fans, all the tents, all the cars, everything that's going on, the trees starting to change. It's quite the beautiful sight. I want you to run down a couple of first half numbers before we uh, take a break. We can start with the offense uh, for Franklin. You have Cora with 57 yards rushing, Cameron Johnson with 21 in the passing, Kai Ross, 14 of 20, 205 yards, three touchdowns and one interception. Receiving wise, Dylan McKinney, four receptions, 96 yards and a couple of scores. Had the last one called back. Uh, Jared Gibson had four receptions, 17 yards. And then for Anderson in the rushing department, they've only gained, by the way, so far, just 11 yards on the ground in the first half. One of the things we, we mentioned in the pregame was how good of a balanced offense Franklin is, and they're on pace to keep that up. Ross, 14 of 20, already 200 yards passing and running the football. Franklin is only a few yards away from hitting the century mark. You know, they are on pace for what they have been able to produce so far throughout this season, and they're bringing that defensive average down. They were giving up 41 and a half points to their opponents. That's going to be that's going to come way down. The defense has been, I think, more impressive than the offense just because of the amount of pressure that they've been able to apply to Norfleet. Norfleet has very little time to get rid of the football. They're setting the tone on both ends of the field, really, the Grizzlies are. All right, halftime report is coming up in a moment. This is the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference Football Game of the Week right here on Indiana SRN. Football fans, welcome back to Friday night. To pure spirits. To pure sports. Welcome back to high school football. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and I just want to say, welcome back! This is Friday night. This is Indiana high school football. This is your IHSAA. When I'm at a Super Bowl and I walk in that stadium at kickoff time and I see that football sitting down there on that field, I get goosebumps because uh, I sewed that football. I am Jane Helser, I recently retired. I started working at Wilson on April 13, 1966. I was 19 years old. I put an application at Wilson. I got the job, never thinking that I'd be there for 48 years. I enjoyed what I did, so I just stayed. The Wilson Football Factory here, it's actually like a secret. I was raised about 20 miles from here and never even knew this place was here. We make NFL footballs year-round. We manufactured the ball for every Super Bowl and every point scored in the NFL since 1941 has been scored with a Wilson football. Jane was the longest tenured employee when she retired. I would get up at about 3.30 in the morning to be on the job at 5 a.m. I had to oil up my machine every day. I could sew about 150 footballs a day. 
A football is made from a big piece of leather. It's cut out like a cookie cutter, and that panel is uh, split down to a certain size. They're stamped with a logo, and then there's a lining that's put on it to hold the shape of a ball. When I get the football, it's in four panels. There's the top two panels. Those two are sewed together, leaving the opening. Then I sew the bottom two panels together. After the lace holes are punched and it, the seam are pounded down, then I sew the full section together. The rule of thumb is you don't make a good football sewer until you run a needle through your finger. One time, the needle just slid up underneath the foot, stuck in my finger, they put an ice pack on it, took me to the doctor, he cut it out, and I went back to work the rest of the afternoon. I'm tough. <laughs> the turner gets the nice job of turning it right side out. Then it goes to the lacer, he or she, uh, puts a bladder in it, and then laces it. After it goes to the lacer, it's molded. Then the ball is ready to be inspected. Sewing the football together is probably the most important quality as far as manufacturing. The ball has to have perfect seams, the ends have to line up perfectly, and therefore I think sewing is probably the most critical job in manufacturing the ball. We do not want to change the product in, the, in its total because the most important thing is the integrity of football. So our thing's consistency, make a consistent product, it feels the same to the player every time they pick it up. There's a cold swing. I tell people that I've been to nine Super Bowls, but I've never been to an Ohio State football game. <laughs> I've been to Miami twice, Tampa twice, Arizona twice, soon to be the third time, uh, New Orleans and Indianapolis. I'm just a worker that got a job when I was 19 years old. And, and stayed there and was able to try to do the best job I could. And I've been rewarded greatly for it. was to feel loved. He said he loved me. My friends told me it wasn't a big deal. They thought he was so cool, but they didn't know what he wanted me to do. All I ever wanted was to feel loved. You have no idea the kind of pressure I felt to take things to the next level. Things were moving so fast. I was basically the only person in the freshman class who hadn't done it yet. So, we did. I loved him. I thought she loved me. My health class had CPR at school. I stayed after class to talk with the instructor about it. They showed me that it didn't have to be that way. They showed me that I get to make my own choices. There is another way. That's the best thing CPR gives you. Another way. A better way. A healthy way. Sometimes you don't see it because you're in your own world, but they don't make you feel bad. They talk to you like a real person, and they save kids from really unhealthy decisions. They tell the truth, and they know what they're talking about. So yeah, my life was different. I started to choose the better way. I honestly don't know where I'd be or what I'd be doing had it not been for CPR. Becoming a licensed sports official is a great way to make a positive difference in the community and support the over 160,000 Indiana student-athletes that participate across 21 IHSAA sports. 
Sports officiating allows you to stay connected to the game, become a role model for our young student athletes, earn extra money, and support the patrons and communities of our IHSAA member schools. To learn more about becoming a licensed IHSAA official, log on to IHSAA.org slash officials today. Back here at Franklin College where the Grizzlies lead Anderson University 31-7. to A couple of scores from around the league midway through the second quarter. Rose Holman leads Manchester 22-0 at halftime. Bluffton is down to Hanover 41-14. to And Mount St. Joseph leads Defiance 41-7. to We are amidst homecoming activities here at Franklin College. And joining me now is the Associate Athletic Director as well as the Head Baseball Coach, Lance Marshall. Lance, thank you so much for joining us. This is a beautiful day for homecoming. The stands are absolutely packed. We just crowned, I'm trying to think of what they would, said they were called, the Golden... I didn't catch that. The gold, it, it looked like a king and a queen, <laughs> Yes, but you, it, it is jam-packed. There's tailgates everywhere. Does it get much better than this? Oh, it's fantastic. Well, first of all, thanks for having me as well, and I'll tell you what, there's no place like Franklin College. Small, small uh, college football, tailgates. I mean, we got tents as far as the eyes can see, grills fired up everywhere. What a great atmosphere. What a fun place to be, so um, there, there's no place better. Homecoming's particularly special around here. Uh, the, the, the trees and the smells as we were walking in were absolutely amazing. What is it that you do, you know, being the baseball coach, you're out of season, maybe some workouts here and there. What is it like for you on a game day, especially during homecoming, during the week to get prepared and get ready for a big day like today? Well, we've got a great staff. A lot of folks on campus pitch in to make, make every day special out here, um, particularly homecoming. There have been a lot of people uh, from facilities that have put in tons of work this week. Uh, administrators have put in a lot of work this week. Uh, so it's, you know, there are a lot of folks that deserve a lot of credit. Uh, me probably being the last of those <laughs> folks. So um, I, I can't tell you, Just it's just so fun to be around here and you see the excitement. Uh, you could feel the buzz. The tents were being set up last night. Uh, there were people pulling RVs in the parking lot last night. It's, uh, it's, it's really special, a lot of fun to be out here. As they were introducing all those candidates, a lot of them made sure to say what it meant to be a Grizz. What does that mean? You can tell, you can kind of sense it. Yeah, I think in our, our athletic department in particular, we talk about Grizz Grit and being tough. Grizz Grit, um, grinding out wins, working our tails off working a little bit harder than the next person. But the one special thing about Franklin, there are, there are many special things, but the one thing that really rises to the top is the, the support that the student athletes and the students have for one another. They, it's unbelievable how well they attend games, how well they support each other on and off the field, in the classroom. And, and these kids are getting it done in the classroom and on the field and having high levels of success uh, in both arenas, which is, which is fantastic and what it's all about. You mentioned off the air that you used to be a football coach as well as a baseball coach. You've been the baseball coach here for 25 years. How long was it before you became an associate athletic director here at the school? Oh, I think it was seven or eight years into it. Um, I really enjoyed the football. Still miss it Saturday afternoons. It's, it's just quite the spectacle. Uh, there's nothing like the ultimate team game, and um, our kids just work, work hard at it and have had a lot of success. But... Um, it was probably seven or eight years into it, and, and we love doing baseball. We're, we're just wrapping up fall baseball tomorrow, uh, which is a great opportunity for our kids to develop as well. We had the privilege of being down in Kokomo for the conference tournament last year. I don't know if you can believe this. There are still people actually going back and watching the archives of those games. Nothing like uh, a baseball tournament in that setting, even with the four-and-a-half-hour lightning delays that we got to experience. <laughs> How different was it being in a place like Kokomo where you're all in one spot and it's it's not a conference school, but also having it on webcast like we were able to do? Having hosted the tournament several times, it was wonderful to have it at a neutral site, uh, have someone else take care of the field and whatnot. And your broadcast was just first class. Our, our kids were watching games that they weren't playing in. I think it was four cameras. Uh, the commentary was fantastic. I think... Keith was running around looking for some kind of dessert for most of the uh, <laughs> yeah. most of the first game I listened to, uh, but yeah, you guys did a great job, and and you know we loved loved uh, playing with that kind of coverage, and, and certainly I'm not surprised people are still watching it. Be being a baseball aficionado myself, I was in hog heaven down there, having baseball all day, and 
Um, is that something you're looking to continue to do in the future, to have it at a neutral site? Is that uh, an important thing to kind of give you guys a break from having to do all the field work and prep between all the games? Yeah, I think so. I, the, the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference, Jay Jones has done a great job as commissioner and has tried to move it up either there or elsewhere permanently off campus during the uh, during the conference tournament because it's just a lot of work for the you know the, the host school you're you're playing during the week so you're dealing with classes and those kind of things speaking of guys hunting we, we for have, things we got a special <laughs> guest here well, i did find dessert and it was good and thank you it was your people who gave me the opportunity that, that's fantastic all right i'm gonna go back downstairs I, they find some more food you, oh well, they are my third eye. <laughs> those. all right that, that was key um now now i'm kind of i'm kind of totally off topic there well, one, I think one of the things uh, for us is w in, in this system that we've kind of built here with the HCAC and, and Indian SRN, getting to all the different schools and seeing all the different campuses and getting to know the people has been just absolutely wonderful for us. And we've loved the relationship we've been able to build with the HCAC. And hopefully it's reciprocated and we can continue to do more things because it's just been an absolute blast. Sure, I'm glad to hear it. And like I said, we love the coverage and the publicity for the conference is humongous. It's uh, it's really been beneficial for all of us. So we appreciate what you're doing. Hope you continue to do it. Is there a chance we can maybe get down and get some regular season Grizz baseball on, on uh, SRN and TV? Be great by me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that decision's above I, your I don't grade. think I'm the final <laughs> answer on that by a long shot, but uh, but no, that that'd be fantastic. And you know, it's fun to, to publicize and to really promote all of our sports. I think we have kids that are doing great things in different sports um, throughout the fall, throughout the winter, obviously throughout the spring. And uh, to have those folks be able to be recognized on, on a, a real quality broadcast is fantastic. I think there are way too many people that. Um, I don't underestimate the talent of Division Three sports. There are a lot of talented young men and young women that play collegiate athletes at the Division Three level. I think uh, that that's something you can speak on for sure. That you know some of these kids watching can say, "Wait a minute, I can go play college athletics," and they can at a very high level. Absolutely, yeah. It's, I mean, our teams are very competitive. I think. Uh, you know, we've sent several baseball players on to play professionally, which is which is fantastic if you get the opportunity. But they've also got a, a, a really outstanding high-level degree when they walk out. So when that career is over, they can pursue whatever their chosen field of endeavor is. How's it looking for the squad this year? Oh, we're excited. You know, it's 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 still three months away, but we're excited. We're always optimistic, and I think we brought in a good class to go with some good returners. We graduated a conference pitcher of the year and a, and a first team all-american and some other guys that were key contributors but i, I think we have a, a real solid qu squad back a, a bunch of quality players and quality young men we thank you so much for joining us lance and we hope to see you again down the line here at franklin not just for football but for for basketball and baseball and all the rest thanks thanks for having me sean we'll be back for the second half here on indiana srn and hcac tv where the grizz lead the ravens 31-7 Back once again here at Franklin College as we're getting ready for the third quarter in just a couple of moments. And, you know, it was nice to hear the baseball coach talk a little bit about baseball season. We won't be too far away from that before you know it. But we've still got football and uh, basketball to go through. So a lot of uh, fun to still come ahead on the forefront of Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference Athletics, but let's talk about this second half now. The Grizzlies are going to get the football to start this third quarter. If you're going to get back into this game and you're Anderson, first off, you're going to have to find a way to run the football. 
Uh, North Fleet is going to have to have more time to throw the football, and you're going to have to not turn the football over. It's You're almost going to have to play a perfect second half. Right, exactly. And I think it all starts with the second point that you mentioned is giving North Fleet enough time because he – and allow that to – you know, change, change up your playbook just a little bit. Get the ball out of his hands as quick as you can. And, you know, but also you want to be able to get deeper into the playbook with those routes that are just a little bit longer. You're going to need some chunk yardage plays. You're going to need, you know, a perfect game to go your way. But it all starts, I think, with protecting him. Uh, the offensive line has to do a much better job to do that. Get the run game going, too. So it all really starts off in the trenches. Are these guys ready to go? It's a brand-new ball game, brand-new second half. You know, don't even look at the scoreboard. Just try to play the best play that you can each and every play. Get this offense going just a little bit. Well, on this Franklin team, you mentioned earlier in the second quarter just how much personnel they have that they can put fresh bodies in there and, he had several different running backs they could choose from. They had several receivers catch a football in the first half as well. So they really just have about everything. If I'm their defense, I might even blitz a little bit more in the second half. For sure. We've seen all the blitzing coming from Franklin. We've seen we see them bring five. We've seen them get to Norfleet with just four. Bring just a little bit of pressure. I think, though, the Grizzlies offense has been good at recognizing what type of defense that Anderson is, especially with those DBs and how far off they're playing. You know, they're throwing those quick hitters to guys like McKinney and Jarrett Gibson. Uh, we'll see if Gibson it, it comes back for the second half, if he's good enough to go. But, yeah, try to bring a little pressure of your own if you're Anderson. Flip flip the script just a little bit any way you can. Try as much as you can and, and try to get something going in your favor. You know, with Norfleet being a young guy and getting some playing time today, he did have the happy feet early. I think he kind of settled that down a little bit in the second quarter, but then he took that big hit down here. And when you're a quarterback and you're taking a lot of hits, you have a little more than happy feet. You're starting to look around wondering who's going to get you next. And we saw him short arm the one football here. He had a guy wide open. So is he thinking more about getting hit or is he thinking more about just running the offense and being productive? Yeah, probably just a little bit of both. And, you know, getting hit has certainly not helped out as much you know there's so much you already have to recognize as a quarterback okay what type of defense are they in you know are they how many guys they have in the box right now what side of the field is more open you know how far off are the db's plan what is the play exactly you know all these things are going through your head you got to think about it all at once and then once the play happens it's kind of just like you, you kind of got to go from there and react to everything that's going on well next week It'll be Rose Hullman and Bluffton. The Beavers get a chance to host the crew here from Indiana SRN. I think that most of us are going except for Keith. So and the A Jerry. team. Yeah, the A team is going. Yeah, they're taking the, the weekend off, which I'm not really sure why, but uh, you know, we'll talk to our union rep about that eventually and make sure that if one of us goes all of us goes. I think that'd be a safer bet, don't you? Oh, yeah. yeah That's so a good we'll, idea. We'll be there next week and get our tourists, uh, first look at the Bluffton squad and see. I know that they were struggling a little bit going into this afternoon's action, but I'm sure we'll be ready for them next week. And, of course, Rose Hallman was one of the favorites in the conference coming in, and everybody seemed like they got off to kind of a rough start. But uh, now that we're in conference play, the idea is to win this conference, get that automatic bid to the NCAA playoffs, and then go from there. And that's why this game is big today for Franklin as well. They got the win last week. They got kind of roughed up in their first couple of games of the season, but you can tell that they can be an explosive football team. As we are waiting for the second half here in just a couple of moments. We've had a little longer halftime than normal. Had the, of course, uh, homecoming court announced earlier today, and they announced the king and the queen there, and so congratulations to them. Real quick, Troy, a couple things that are popping out on this box score that we have here. The first downs, Franklin had 17. Anderson was only able to come away with five in that first half, and Something that really shocked me was the rushing yards. Anderson had four rushing yards 
in that first half. And on the season, they're only averaging about 40. So, you know, already they're not uh, they're, they're not a good running team, but just surprising at how little yardage we saw in the running game for Anderson, and they're going to have to get something like that going to help out with the rest of their second-half offense. This is how the first half ended from a scoring standpoint. This was the 48-yard field goal. Now, there was a little bit of a breeze behind him, but I don't think it was strong enough to really make that much difference, so he got every bit of that one, and I don't know what his career high is, but that's got to be pretty close. 48-yard field goal. Thank my, that might be his cap, <laughs> 40, 49 maybe. And maybe one day with the help of a little bit of wind, we could see Baldwin knock it in from even farther. You know, that was a pretty good effort there. That was almost blocked. I'm sure as a kicker, you see that guy flying in there, and he got it off just in time. I understand we're waiting for the head official to make his way back. I am not sure where he would have gone at halftime. Wow. Maybe maybe hmm. Keith Keith found him somewhere and he's holding him up. <laughs> well, we know Keith was selling hot dogs <laughs> in the first half. And knowing some of the officials, he knows I would venture to say he probably got him for a couple extra bucks someplace. But I think Keith is – are you down there? I am down here. I, I have sold some hot dogs. I sold some hot dogs. I don't you think we got his mic on right now. <laughs> Your mic's not on, though. I don't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think we shut him off. Well, no more from him. He, yeah. He's dead. You, you got your one shot. Hello. Oh, oh there he is. <laughs> what, were you stuffing money in your pocket? Forgot to turn your mic on? Or no, what? this little kid got in my way. And it, it ruined the antenna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's I, it. Blame the little kid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I still have uh, my active license in the NC2A if they need me to wear my white hat. I well, can you fill in when we get this game going? Well, I, I, if you would like me to, I, I probably could have to talk to the commissioner. I wouldn't mind. I don't think we've ever been in a situation like we're waiting for one official. Well, you Usually know, they're all together, aren't they? Yeah, thing, you know, things happen occasionally. Let me ask you a question, fellas. Yeah. You know, next week you said that uh, Jerry and I are both gone. Uh, who's driving all that stuff next I week? have no clue. I... My contract says I don't drive, so I'm not sure what, if it's Sean or, yeah, Sean Sean says he's glad to do it. Sean's got you know, the van. To fill a little bit of time, I will tell you this, that we have some high school football games and the IHSAA tournament draw is uh, tomorrow yeah. at uh, 5 o'clock, and we're going to have up to five football games. And as you know now that when we do these football games, a lot of people know that we do the Heartland right. Conference game of the week. And there's been a lot of talk with the coaches around of what's going on. So uh, it, a lot of shout out to us as the head official just came back on the field. Yeah, he's uh, well, he's getting close. He ain't quite made it yet, but he is now on his way. So I would be curious to know what that was all about, though. I'll give this back, back to Sean now. All right, thank you. You guys have a nice evening. And quit picking on the little kids down there, too. Can you believe that? He bl blame a little kid? Oh, I, I can believe it. Yeah. I can believe it. <laughs> so now that the official is back, that was uh, a very lengthy delay. This is interesting. Ah, so they are calling the coaches together. Interesting. Now, I I can only speculate that this could be about Keith, too. I don't know. <laughs> Let's uh, Maybe they'll talk about it. Could be. Maybe they'll run the clock a little bit in the second half. You know, this is, you know, I'm, I know Sean is down there. Keith is down there. You think one of those two would sprint over there, get in that conversation. That's what what's going a sideline reporter does, right? Yeah. That's, I think that's their job. Yeah. Well, we'll have a long talk about that in our post-production meeting. But, I, but the thing is, you... you you have talked now a little bit here, but what was the discussion somewhere off of the field that the head official would be late at this stage? So, hmm. and, the, and the thing is, they're not going to tell us have a feeling. Yeah, it, it may be tough for us to find out up here unless we can visually see something that happens during the game, but uh, for the moment right now, well, I no think, idea. I think Sean might be down the list. Take a listen. Uh, Sean, what's going on? 
Guys, we were informed that they were reviewing the targeting penalty called in the first half. We don't know what's going to come from that, but we heard that's what the delay is about, and that's why they bro- brought both coaches to talk about it. So if we see that player back on the field in the second half, obviously they overturned it. However, that's what the delay was for. Okay. Wow. Well, I wouldn't think uh, so- a review like that would take this amount of time if that's indeed the case, but yeah, I guess we'll find out. So there you see the head official, and we can finally get this second half underway. Franklin will get the football first. I I would have thought if that was a, if in I believe Sean for sure, but I thought you could probably have done that really early in the in the halftime if that was a concern. Some of the Franklin players were getting a few sprints in here on the sideline just trying to stay loose. The wind has picked up a little bit more. In fact, the wind has actually shifted. It's no longer blowing from left to right. It's blowing from right to left, which is a little bit unusual, at least on the right side. But you look on the left side, it's kind of blowing across. Yeah, the the American flag is blowing towards kind of the Anderson sideline. So I guess we would call that a swirling wind. So here we go. Second half action is underway. And Franklin will have a return from the 10 yard line. And a hard hit in the open tackle. Derek Thompson on the return there for Franklin. Could hear that hit from up here. Yeah, big time hit. Let's see what Franklin has in store. Kai Ross in the first half. 14 of 20, 205 yards, had the one pick. And we'll go back to Sean here in just a couple of moments. Right after this first play, we got some more information perhaps on the delay at halftime. So Kai Ross, first down and 10, handoff. It'll be Cora, and let's go to Sean. Fellas, they did not overturn the target. They did not overturn it, so he's still disqualified from this game. Okay, very good. Oh, I, I take that back. Huh? They've they've actually reversed it again. Oh. They are playing him. He is number six out on the field. So okay. we're still getting information as it comes. Apologize, <laughs> fellas. Although betting is back in the ball game. That completion Five to the far the side, the short of the first down. Remember and so three. Dylan McKinney again on the reception. So he is back in after some discussion on the, the targeting, the which, you know, that, that's kind of unusual three. that that was overturned like that. But nonetheless, he is playing. It is. Very unusual. You don't see something like that happen very often. There he is right there. He's yeah. slot corner. Trips to the near side. Third down and short. Ross to throw. Ball caught. Near side. It'll be Cora. Nice sidestep. Uh, he does it again. Gets the first down and much more down to the 49. How about the two moves he made here in the open field? And he left two defenders standing there watching him go by. Looking silly. He's making the defenders. Cora's so elusive. Uh, another look at it again. Change of pace. Boom. Whoop. Does it again, too. Staley was the first guy that he ran by. So now for the first time in the second half, Franklin into Anderson territory. Core around the right side, has running room at the 35-30, cut back 25-20, still on his feet inside the 20, nice run all the way down to the 16-yard line. The man just won't stop, he's that good. Throw it to him out of the backfield from the stretch play on the right side, going towards that side where Brock Veach is. And Veach setting the edge. Alongside Armani Christopher, that right side of the offensive line has been cooking. Franklin may set the tone in the running attack in the second half. Core gets the run again, 10-yard line, down to the five, and then driven out of bounds at the four. Cora had a little bit of a break in that first half, and then they brought him back in toward the end of the half, and now he's getting the bulk of the carries here in the third quarter on their first drive. And they're knocking on the door once again. It'll be first and goal from the four-yard line. 
Corey is out. Johnson in. Ross to throw and drop. Ball thrown out to Tyron Moore, the tight end. Five, Caught Moore. a pass in the first half. Up by and by the way, he it. is probably a celebrating a alum from Brownsburg. Because they have a pretty good football team. They do. Number one, arguably, in 6A. They got a tough game coming up next week. They play Sean's school. I hear that. Both teams undefeated. So it'll be second down and goal. They'll fake the handoff over the middle. Quick hitter. Is it caught? Does he hang on? Yes. Touchdown. It'll be Spencer Wright on the reception from four yards out. Add six more on the board as Franklin now leads it 37 to 7. We will see Derek Balden back in. And a great start, much like what they had at the beginning of the ball game when they got the turnover and scored two quick touchdowns after an interception. So the extra point is on the way. It is perfect. Franklin, 38, Anderson, 7. Well, how about Franklin? They marched down the field, got the running game going again, and put seven more on the board, and now a commanding 31-point lead. Just like how they started the game, and it didn't take them very long to get down the field and go 72 yards. Ross now has his fourth passing touchdown of the evening. And Spencer Wright, who's had a quiet night, just his second catch, but he's good enough to put six on the board. Holguin deep along with Hegler right for Anderson. As now they get the football for the first time here in the second half. And this will be a kick that will sail down to the goal line and there will be a return. And a very, very short return indeed for Hegler right. I think he thought that ball was gonna go out into the end zone and then all of a sudden it hit at about the one yard line came back to him. It was a perfectly placed kick by Bolden. Really tough spot for Hegler right to be in and good coverage. Bo Hess has been a monster on defense, on special teams. By the way, back in the ball game is uh, Norfleet. We thought we might see Nathan Clayton today, but so far that has not been the case. So first down and 10. Ravens will try to run the football right out of the chute and nowhere to go. That defense swarming. Hegler right had no running room at all. He might even lose a couple of yards on that one. It'll be second down and 12. Jada was in there also. Demarion Newell out of Gary Westside. Yeah, that front line of Franklin has just been a brick wall. We mentioned the halftime number. It was just four yards rushing, and now it's become two. So they will bring a new running back into the ball game. Looks like Gavin has now stepped into the lineup. He is in there. Trips to the right side. Norfleet will give it to Gavin. Gavin sidesteps a defender, crosses the 10-15, gets the first down and more before he's driven out of bounds. Nice run by Antoine Gavin out of Laurel, Mississippi. Not a big guy, though. He's only 5'9", 163 pounds, a freshman. Stack receivers near side, trips to the far side, empty backfield. Holguin will make the catch as he's tried to sidestep a couple of defenders. He does so, and his gain out to near the 26-yard line. 
Holguin started his football career at Indiana Wesleyan before transferring to Anderson. And again, the football at the 26. Norfleet, by the way, looks like he's okay. He got hit pretty hard there at the end of the first half, but he's out here in this third quarter trying to lead a drive to begin their first drive as Gavin stays in. Four receivers in as well. Norfleet fires, and is it going to be held on to? No. Falls incomplete. Pass was intended for Ryan McGuff. And Darian Porter got there just in the nick of time. If he's there a second late, McGuff may be able to snag it and then get rid of Porter and go down the sideline. So a touchdown saving deflection made by Porter. By the way, Northfleet, that was maybe one of the better balls he has thrown. There was confidence behind it. He really threw it on a line. He's going to go empty backfield once again. Trips to the near side. See if Franklin will come after him. They will drop back in coverage and the throw behind the intended receiver. That was Gavin who was split out to the right side, but it was way behind him, and it falls incomplete, so the Ravens will have to punt the football away. Yeah, not on the same page, I think. I don't know if Gavin just ran the right, wrong route or if during the play they had different ideas of what the coverage was and therefore not on the same page with whatever the route was going to be. Looks like Chase Miles is deep inside the... 40-yard line now at the 40 for Franklin. Low snap and a wobbly kick to the far sideline. It goes out of bounds at around the 45. That'll be an easy spot there for the official. And a reminder, today's game brought to you in part by Pat Cherry Insurance. Their staff will provide you over 40 years of trusted expertise and knowledge to help protect your assets. You can visit them to get a plan in place for you and your family by calling them at 317-894-7000 or contact them at pat at cherryinsuranceagency.com. So Franklin with the football for the second time here in the third quarter. Kai Ross back in the ball game. Looks like Derek Thompson will be the new running back. The pitch, and they'll sweep to the near side. Hard hit and out of bounds. Late hit right there. I shouldn't say late hit by Enjoy Williams, but a hard hit by Williams. From Kai Ross. Here come some of the newer guys that have been That's rotating been around in that first half. That was Winburn. Shows a lot of explosiveness. Getting the pitch there for three yards. I think as this game goes on, we're going to see a lot of these guys just stick it out for the rest of the afternoon. Windburn out of New Albany. And the keeper this time, and not much there. Might be even a loss of a yard is Kairos on, no on the carry. So it'll be third eight. down and long. That brings up third down and eight. I think at this stage, Franklin is going to be very happy. Just keep running that clock. Keep everybody healthy. Get ready for next week. But to come out of here now 2-0 after their rough start. And speaking of staying healthy, Gibson, we see him on the sideline. He has a, a cap on, and his shoulder pads are off. Ross hits his target for the first down. And that's to number seven, Spencer Wright. You know, Kai Ross, only a sophomore. They list him at 5'10", so he's not a really big guy, but he really, when he throws the football, got a very strong arm. You see it right there. He put that on a, on a line. And he has seen very little pressure applied from Anderson. We talked at the halftime break. You know, could we see some more blitzing, some more pressure that Anderson could be applying? Not yet. This time he's firing for the end zone. Ball caught. Did he get to the pylon? And yes, touchdown. That's Winburn again. 
Winburn at only 5'9", 165 pounds, able to hold on, get to the pylon and the score. This is what makes Franklin so good is, you know, you have these short little gains, whether you're running the football or just short little quick hits, and then all of a sudden, Ross breaks one out, throws one deep down the sideline because he has a lot of speed on that outside, Winburn included, who kind of, he's come out of nowhere in this third quarter. Franklin with the extra point leads it 45-7. My name is Brittany. A little thing I love about the Egg White Grill is the toasty English muffin. It's toasted perfectly. It's just a little crispy, but not like hard crispy, but just crispy enough that when you bite into it, everything is perfect. <laughs> My name is Curtis, and I love the Egg White Grill because the egg itself, it's like soft and fluffy, like a pillow. I, and I, and I, I would eat my pillow, but I'd eat <laughs> the, the Chick-fil-A breakfast egg white sandwich for sure. They say nice guys don't finish first. So maybe it's time to reconsider what it means to be first. It's about being your best, but knowing you could be even better. It's being present, but respectful of history. You sure you want to make that move? It's donating something more valuable than money. It's believing in yourself and something bigger. It's coming from different families. We're treating each other like brothers. It's not just being a man, it's being a mason. Well, the Ravens will get the football. Holguin is one of the two deep backs. And there will be a return inside the 10-yard line by Hegler Wright. Hegler Wright up the sideline gets a nice return out to near the 45-yard line. Hegler Wright has been trying to get a jump start to this Anderson offense. He's had plenty of great returns so far. And here's... A pretty There's great play the on the other end. 43 the yards, Ross, Winburn. That connection. And Winburn, the effort to dive at the pylon. You love that. He's pumped up about it. The freshman coming up big with the score. First down now for the Ravens at the 45-yard line. Norfleet will put Holguin in motion. And Holguin around the right side, slides ahead, gets a nice gain. Looked like he might get forced out of bounds. So he will get to around the 49. That's where he, they say he stepped out of bounds. It'll be second down and six. Holguin only has two catches this afternoon. They've involved him more in the jet sweep game, trying to get him the ball in that fashion. Other than that, you, you know, add in the uh, pressure that's been applied by the front line and then the good coverage in the secondary. They've been able to take away Holguin out of this game. Norfleet to throw, gets hit as the ball is released, and he got hit low. It undercut him as he went to the turf. It looked like Shea McGrath, the defensive end, was there to get him, and he took a really hard hit when he went down. Here is a telemetry sports replay. This will be a look at your running back right here for the Grizzlies, of course, that being Garrett Cora. Now, he didn't have to reach the top speed there, but 17-4 is not bad. Oh, not bad at all. Certainly not in our range, but close. So Norfleet... He is up, but he is uh, very shaky, so will it be Jose Olivo, who is out of Knightstown, or will it be Nathan Clayton? I think it's going to be Clayton. Yeah, Clayton's out there, black long sleeves on. Nathan Clayton, big kid at 6'6", 228, he's out of Tempe, the Tempe area Tempe High School so he will take over 
at the 49-yard line. Clayton to throw. He gets hit immediately. Tries to get the football out of there. Flag is down. We might have a holding here as well, but... Boy, they really put the pressure on him. Now, he might be not quite as mobile as we saw with Norfleet, but Clayton he couldn't get his arm up. He got grabbed immediately. Let's go to Sean because he has us updated on some scores. Holy. Penalty is going to go against Anderson. We'll try to get back to Sean coming up here in just a couple of moments. You ready? Let's go to Sean. St. Joseph leads defiance 41-21. Hanover is leading Bluffton 49-14. Of course, we'll be in uh, Bluffton next week as the Ravens will have to punt the football away. Another wobbly kick will head toward the sideline, goes out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. The ball will the so we will see the Grizzlies get the football back. Probably see some new bodies in there eventually, as you talked about a little bit ago for this uh, Grizzlies offense. Anderson, unless they can make some kind of big-time dramatic comeback, will lose their fifth in a row to begin the year. Fall to 0-2 in the conference. Grizzlies on the other side will go to 2-3, and, and more importantly, 2-0 and in conference play. And they'll run the football across the 30 out to about the 32. Looked like that was Derek Thompson. He's out of Brownstown Central High School. Now let's go back to Sean. Some updates. Hanover leads Bluffton 49-14 to in the second half. And Mount St. Joseph leads Defiance 41-21 to early in the fourth quarter. Okay. And if we get another update, which I'm sure we will before the day is over, we'll go back to Sean again. So now it'll be second down, handoff again to Thompson up the middle, and he gets a first down. It's interesting. We haven't, we didn't see Thompson at all in that first half, and he, we've seen him as the number two running back in a couple of games behind Cora. But it's been kind of a running back committee yeah. uh, this afternoon. With the way they've ran the ball, Cora has 100 yards rushing, and then Johnson and Jennings have had a couple of nice good looks. Thompson is running back four, and he looks just as good. So Ross on first down, fakes the handoff. Quick hitter over the middle, big hit. Ball comes loose. They're going to say it's an incomplete pass. Pass went to Jake Tharp, but he was unable to hold on there. So it's going to be second down. Even with the incompletion, Ross, that's just his fifth incompletion of the afternoon. Uh, he has gone to the right spot every single time. He's going through his reads, and even if he doesn't have to go through reads, he knows where to go with the football before the snap even gets back to him. So they'll do a jet sweep now to the near side and 45-50 and how about Derek Thompson again gets the nice gain a first down run again for Franklin College. 22 yard carry for Thompson. But look at that blocking. And the blocking downfield, too, it's been really good at the line of scrimmage, but Franklin has done a tremendous job of setting kind of a new line of scrimmage. They're getting off the ball a lot better than the Anderson front line is, and they're getting into the second level, too. They're going after the linebackers, and then the wide receivers, good job getting into the secondary, blocking those guys downfield. So first down, put the football again at the 41-yard line. Thompson again, sweep to the right side, tries to cut it back. We'll get two yards out of the carry. This is a Franklin team that has, as you would probably guess, players out of all parts of the state of Indiana. Mentioned that Thompson out of Brownstown Central. You got Tri-West with Ross and Cora. 
Spencer Wright out of Western Boone. McKinney out of Evansville. So this is a Franklin football program that recruits the entire state. Second down and eight. Ross again sweep to the right. Thompson gets cut off this time. Perhaps no gain at all, and he got hit immediately. That was Dominic Johnson. And yeah, they're loving this sweep to the right side. They like working the right side of the offensive line. But that time, Anderson read it really well with Johnson coming from the linebacker spot. Maybe they want to see if Armani Christopher at 6'4", can get out there a little quicker. Huh? They just keep running hit to him to his side, and he's a big fellow on that right tackle. So it'll be third down and long now as Ross will throw. That'll be a first down. The completion made to Jake Tharp. And you can move the chains once again for the Grizzlies. The timing on these routes, I mean, it's tremendous footwork by these receivers. You know, they work on this stuff so much in practice. But Ross now in his sophomore season, this is really good timing, you know, at such a young age in this football program, able to connect with these guys the way they are. They're just making every route look easy. Ross will hand it off this time, a hole up the middle, 25 down to near the 21-yard line. That'll be is that Jared Gibson on the carry, or was it 22? It's going to be Jennings instead of Gibson. Ball side, 21 yard line. So Cam Jennings with a run of about seven yards. So Franklin knocking on the door once again as they're just a yard shy of getting in into the red zone. Jennings will stay in as the lone setback. They'll fake the handoff to Jennings, throw out in the flat. Ball's going to be caught. And as the receiver falls ahead, he's going to be shy. That's going to be Hunter Hatfield. And they'll put the football at about the 16-yard line, and they're going to say it is a first down. And Hatfield, with that catch, becomes the ninth different receiver with a reception this afternoon from Ross. Hatfield, just a sophomore out of... South Dearborn High School in Aurora, Indiana. So gets his first catch of the day. And Franklin again will move the chains. Could be the final series here for Ross as the handoff to Jennings and not much running room. He might get back to the line of scrimmage. By the way, for this uh, Anderson Ravens football team, they were shut out their first two games, trying 38-0 to paw 55-0. They got seven against Alma, and they got seven against Rose. So offensively, as you see the sideline there for the Ravens, they just can't seem to get anything going offensively despite switching quarterbacks. Hand off. Up the middle, inside the 15, and the run again by Cam and Jennings. On the run. Again, a four, brought down to 13 yards. So it'll be third down and long. Brought down by number 59, Owen. Hatfield back in the lineup, and players just continue to shift in and out of the offense. You know what is nice about this? If you're Franklin, you got so many different players you can use, and you get the more reps, and everybody feels comfortable with one another when they do get an opportunity to play as Thompson back in trips to the left third down and long he'll throw to the end zone and it's going to be dropped at the last second nearly intercepted and that was uh, Staley who was unable to hold on to the football that ball hung up a little bit there for Kai Ross you can see Staley and he's just positioning himself waiting for that ball to fall into him watch this it's I don't know exactly who Ross is throwing to because he overshoots one guy and then it falls kind of around the loppy. But yeah, then kind of running into your own guys too is what happened with Staley. Otto Bating is the one who ended up hitting him, Staley. 
So a field goal from 30, and I think this is going to be wide. Nope, it's going to be good. Just inside the upright to the right. Another field goal for Baldwin and Franklin on top of this one, 48-7. Don't forget, next Saturday, the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference Game of the Week will be Rose Hullman. The Fighting Engineers taking on the Beavers of Bluffton will be on the air at about 1.15. Kickoff time is at 1.30. And don't forget, we'll be naming the player of the game coming up a little bit later. I know we have the votes to go through, but that will be coming up as well. So for all of you in here and down on the field, get your votes ready. And there should be a food prize for the player of the game, but I think one man in particular may have uh, got his hands into that stuff before yeah. the game started. The so. infamous cookies. Holguin will take this one off the bounce on the return, gets across the 35, and a dog pile there near the 38-yard line. So the cookies will be the prize again, and I know that they always enjoy getting those and sharing those with their teammates. But for the Ravens, they'll have it first and 10 at their own 39-yard line. Anderson's goal now is to get into the end zone again. Something positive for next week. And then depending on how Norfleet is going into next week's game, it might be Clayton. And Norfleet is back in after he took that hit. So he I have it first and 10. Ravens will run the football over the left side. Not much there for Travis Moon. Let's now go back to Sean downstairs. Thanks, guys. Speaking of Rose Holman, by the way, they are leading Manchester right before halftime, 41-7. to So not a lot of close games today in the old Heartland Conference. Back to you. You know what will make that fun is when the two teams the two teams that are playing and, and winning big today, and they meet later. You know, so you'll find out a lot here pretty soon about your football team as it'll be second down and about nine. Norfleet steps up in the pocket, decides to throw the football. Hull Queen will make the catch at the 42, gets the first down there at the 40-yard line, maybe even 39. Finally, something down the field. Holguin finding some open space. Norfleet stays patient. He has room to maneuver, not facing any defenders in his face, and makes a nice clean throw. So here around the right side will be Ryan McGough down the sideline, stays in bounds, and he will be out of bounds at about the two-yard line. So the Ravens. Marching down the field, chance to get on the board here at the near end of the third quarter. McGuff now has two catches that have gone 30 yards or more. That one goes 38. Well, they're not going to get another playoff as that will do it for the third quarter. But it is all Franklin Grizzlies after three. They lead it 48-7. warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN, 
Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. Well, 15 more minutes says uh, Franklin in the driver's seat to move to 2-0 and in the HCAC. But Anderson right now trying to get it into the end zone for just the second time here this afternoon. This is going to be a huge win, a huge momentum builder, I think, for Franklin as the rest of this HCAC schedule plays out and they start to play the much better teams. You play the Mount St. Joseph, the Rose Holman and the Hanover. Those will be very exciting games and perhaps another high scoring affair. We've had high scoring games all over the conference today. Lawler on the carry there for the Ravens. Might get a yard out of it. It's going to be second down and goal. Holguin will stay in the ball game. McGuff is the other receiver to the near side. Now Holguin will reset to the left. Tight end lined up to the right as well at his keys. And jumping up front, Norfleet will throw to the end zone. Jump ball, and it was too far. It would have been out of bounds anyway. And we've got the flag down here in the near side. I think they may have gotten Franklin jumping up front. Been a fairly clean game from Franklin. That's just their third penalty. They have been just owning Anderson in every category. Ball is at the one yard line. How about another Eastern Hancock alum for you? That's Lawler in the backfield. He got that last carry. Again, the pipeline out of Eastern Hancock. Lawler gets the call and he is going to be down, I believe, at the one yard line. They're going to mark it actually at the two instead. You just got all kinds of talent coming out over there, don't you? <laughs> hey, what can I say? So now it's going to be third down and goal. Norfleet trying to get this team in the end zone. Anthony split wide to the near side. Trips to the left. Norfleet will look to his left. Hitter to the inside, and McGuff will make the catch. Gets into the end zone from two yards out, and the Ravens get on the board here in the fourth quarter. Love the play call, and it's just real quick. Once you get that quick release from Norfleet, good receiver blocking up front. McGuff. Basically just walks McCall on in. McGolf has had quite the game. Five catches tonight, 100 yards receiving. So now the extra point attempt. Mateo Jesh. The kick is on the way. It is good. Franklin, 48. Anderson, 14. can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Forty-eight, fourteen, Franklin with the big lead. They'll get the football back here in this fourth quarter. By the way, I think we have seen the last of Kai Ross. He is getting some ice on that elbow. 
So I think he is done for the day. We might see Blake Shear out of Fort Wayne Leo. But a good productive day for Ross. A short kick here to the near sideline. It'll be a fair catch at the 31-yard line. And let's take a look at that score. Well, you said they needed something positive. That's a good put-together touchdown drive again. A golf on the quick hitter. It's just quick enough to where the DBs don't know how to react because they have to engage with the wide receivers who are blocking them. And McGough is kind of in a little bit of a, a dummy motion back towards where the ball is snapped. And it's all in one fluid motion, catch, and put it in for six. Blake Shear is in the back of quarterback. And they'll run the football. Big hole up the middle to the 40-yard line. Derek Thompson on the carry. Derek Thompson again, by the way, for again, Blake nine, Shear. 6'2", 205. He is a junior as we mentioned, out of Fort Wayne, Leo. And he really on the stop for Anderson. Second down and one at the 40-yard line. So that was a gain of nine there by Thompson. So again, second down and one. Shear out of the shotgun. Thompson again on the carry, looking to get to the outside. Now he stumbled, but he got enough there for the Thompson first down. Here. Most of the crowd still here this afternoon on a beautiful day for college football. It is. I mean, you can ask for for better weather. I mean, you can ask for a couple of degrees warmer, but this is this is perfect hoodie sweatshirt weather That's to right. watch a football game. So a first down now for Shear. Handoff Thompson, sweep right, 45-50, and gets another big run and a first down to about the 43 of Anderson. Pretty good kick out block by Jance Hunt. Junior tied in out of Bloomington. That's what allowed that big hole on the right side. Again, they continue to just ground and pound on that right side of the offensive line. They got two new guys patrolling that side now. We saw Brock Veach actually come in earlier as an extra offensive lineman, and he's over there, and next to him is Tyler Wilty. Cam Jennings will be in the ball game now as the lone running back. Jennings will get the call as he looks for a hole, dives ahead to the 40. Near side yeah, official says the knee went down at the 41-yard line. A gain of two. Owen Smith on the stop for Anderson. More Second players continue eight. to shift in and out of the lineup, so a lot of guys are getting some playing time here this afternoon for the Grizzlies. And they run a lot of time off the clock as well. The play clock generally has gotten well under 10 seconds before they snap the football. This time they're up there a little bit quicker. High snap, handoff, another... Nice block and a hole up the middle at the 30, 25, 20. Still on his feet all the way down to the 10-yard line. Cam Jennings, what a tough run that time by the Grizzly running back. Jennings, a magician. I don't know how he got through the first wall. I don't know how he got past the second wall. Yeah, take another look at this, because he kind of disappears in here somewhere. Pulling guard from the left side. I think it just spins out of a tackle, and then here it's a lot of just kind of running into him, not wrapping up by Anderson. Jennings has run tough. Thompson has run tough. Cora had a pretty quick day today. He finished with 100 yards rushing. Yeah, they've had a... Like you said earlier, a committee of running backs able to do the job here this afternoon. Trips to the left on the first down. Once again on the carry, able to break one tackle and stay on his feet is Jennings as he'll be gang tackled there. They'll say it got to the nine yard line. Jennings has been taught so well to keep that balance, keep his feet. He's such an agile running back. 
line. He's going to stay out there. I think he probably wants to get rewarded with a touchdown. Johnson scored on the last rushing touchdown they had in the second quarter. Well, if I'm Jennings, too, I'd like to get that opportunity to put six points on the board. Again, after that really nice run. Shear now on second down. It will be Jennings. Finds a hole left side. Took a big hit. And they're going to say he's down at the one-yard line. Boy, how about that? He held on to the football after that big hit. The weird part about it is I think with the hit he took, I think that saved a touchdown. Because I think if they wrap Jennings up, I think he's just going to take him into the end zone. But it was a huge hit, and that was actually the player who originally got ejected from the game. That was Botang. Otto is. Botang. And All he right. laid a, a lick on Jennings. Um, listen, if you're going to get me down here, Cam Jennings, you're going to get me in the end zone. That's right. Get that man the ball. And they've got two tight ends in the ball game just for that specific purpose. Jennings gets the call, gets hit, drives ahead, and I don't think he got in. He might be just Cam inches Jennings away. No gain on the play. Second down and goal at the one. Hmm. Guess what? Guess who's going to get it again? You would think. And Anderson's going to come with what I think would be considered a run stuffer. The jumbo package. Yeah. Right there in the middle. 91 Joshua Slayton, 5'11", 320 out of Louisville, Kentucky. And he'll come in at the nose position. Will Cam Jennings get the football again? Jennings, this time he will get in for the score. They rewarded Jennings for his hard work on the drive. And Franklin adds six more on the board. And now leading at 54 to 14. Much deserved rushing touchdown for Jennings. Did a lot of work on that drive. Well, and the other thing is, the guy's a, just a really powerful running back. They list him at 6'2 and 180 pounds. And you can see he can run with a lot of power with those legs. The kick is a line drive kick, and, and this time it is good. no good. Franklin 54, Anderson 14. <laughs> Franklin with that 54 to 14 lead will be announcing in just about three minutes or so the player of the game and the cookies will go to that player of the game. Cookies you said, sound really yeah. Really well, I'm wondering what steakhouse we're going to when we're done. Yeah. Let, let us know, Mickey D's. Let us know if you're a Franklin uh, Franklin community member. Uh, if there's a good spot to hit. When did Mickey D's get a steakhouse? I'm trying <laughs> to figure that one out. Line drive and a return from the 10. Across the 20, 25, a little bit of a lane out to about the 39-yard line. Let's take a look at that score. Big guys up front. You have two tight ends. Yeah, you saw right at the snap just – all the offensive linemen wearing white cleats, and those white cleats were all one yard ahead of where they started. Watch. Look at them get upfield, and it's just, it's just too easy. So Anderson will have the football at the 39. I mentioned that Roosevelt Norfleet, who got the start, came out. He is back in for his second series in a row after getting hurt. Keys in motion will reset to the left. Norfleet will pitch the football. Gavin fumbles it, and does it stay in play? I think it went out of bounds. It'll stay right here. 
Tell you what, Gavin was heading that way to the right, and he threw the football kind of out of his possession behind him. Second down and 10. So second down and 10 as he is given no gain there. In fact, he might have lost about a half a yard. Trips to the near side, Keys. Holguin will stay out there, McGuff as well. Gavin will get the call, and there's just not much there. He might get a couple. In fact, he got picked up twice. <laughs> he left his feet. Not because he wanted to either. Each, each side really has their selection of small running backs. We've seen Gavin. Hegler Wright has had a couple of carries. Those two guys have a lot of speed, and you know they play much bigger than their appearance. The run game just not much doing. And if you can't run the football, boy, they'll uh, they'll come after you like they're doing right here. Here's the blitz. Norfleet throws. He gets hit hard. It's up for grabs. And is it going to be caught? I believe it's Keys is there. And they're going to say, yes, it is a reception. And Keys, big body right there, one-on-one -on -one coverage. He able to get the catch. And I think they're going to put it at the 24-yard line. I can't wait to rewatch this because I think he pins it on the back of Riddick Bolton. Bolton is all over him, and he catches it and pins it on his back and then somehow brings it across to his stomach. Ooh, big time hit in the open field after the catch. I'm going to take another look at the catch right here. Well, Norfleet with a dangerous step up in the pocket. He got hit from both sides, but look at this catch. He can't even locate the football. I thought for a split second it was taken away by Bolton, but they're going to give the reception to the offense in favor the offensive advantage on that situation. By the way, Ted Lampson is the one who took the hit. So now it's going to be second down at about 13. And Norfleet will throw it and just throw it away. Take a look at this one. There it is. See, I think you're right. There is a penalty marker down on this play. Ryan McGuff was the intended receiver. I think this penalty is going to go against the Ravens. And yeah, once they hit the ground and then they roll over, that possession stays with the Ravens. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty. Yeah, they say illegal blindside block. Well, I'm just, I'm, it's crazy the, the amount of hits that Norfleet has been taking. And the situations he's found himself in, that play was... Pretty spectacular. I mean, you can't take, don't want to take much away from that play. The, the, the step up and the throw by Norfleet and then the crazy acrobatic catch by Keys. So Norfleet looks to throw again. And if another flag is down on the near side, the ball will be caught. That flag came out very quickly. And I think it's going to go against the Ravens again. It was the near side official. Yeah, it looks like a legal formation. Someone not up or somebody who's not supposed to be up is on the line of scrimmage. Legal formation on the offense, five in the backfield. Five yard penalty to play the game. You know, the way that it was looking to me, it was Ben Gaston who may have not been on the line of scrimmage. He was kind of shaking his head either that. He was just frustrated by the call. Football will be at the 35 yard line. Antoine Gavin will stay in. We are only moments away from announcing the infamous player of the game and the awarding of the cookies after the game. Norfleet rolling. 
Here they come, and he didn't get rid of the football. He gets caught from behind. Now, don't taunt him right there. That's the last thing you want to do. <laughs> yeah, there's been some chippiness for sure. Norfleet's asking, hey, can I get some help here? Because <laughs> Devontae Brown tracked him down and then told him something about it. Well, you don't want to have your nice play negated by a penalty. So, after this punt, you will kindly announce the HCAC football game of the week, player of the game, okay? My pleasure. Line drive kick, and it got there quickly. Out kicked the coverage there, didn't he? Flag is That's down on the near on the side. Edge. I'm not sure. We'll wait for a second it's here. I think down. somebody might have said something or, you know, who knows at this stage. It's starting to become a flag parade of this fourth quarter. But the official, the linesman on the near side is the one who threw the flag. And we'll wait for the referee to tell us. Look at those cookies. Oh, my. Some of those, I hope they're us. all still in there by the time you get down there. There were 42, and now there's only 22. <laughs> well, whoever whoever ends up getting it, which we know, but the fans don't know yet. But hopefully we'll see uh, most of those go to the offensive line because they, they deserve it, I think. Well, the good news is if there's only 22 left, each member of the starting unit can get one. That'd be the ideal thing, right? And then Sean can save some for us when we go home. That's a lot of cookies. I mean, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Myers, right? She's uh, blessing the Franklin team. I, I, man, they look so good. You know, Jared Producer said that's right. We ought to get. I mean, they ought to have two batches. Why don't we ever get any? <laughs> Doesn't that make sense? All right, you want to name the player of the game? Let's do it. Okay, go ahead. All right. Unofficially. Our numbers for this individual. He's going to finish the game 21 of 27 for 270 yards passing. Again, that's by my count. I'm, I'm sure I could be off a little bit. But still, nonetheless, a tremendous performance by the sophomore the Kai Ross this afternoon. 270 yards passing, five passing touchdowns yeah. to four different receivers. McKinney had two of those. And McKinney had a heck of a game, four catches for 84 yards. But... Kai Ross is your player of the game this week in the HCAC. Well, the way we had to re-punt it, it'll be an end-over-end <laughs> kick and keeping it from going out of bounds. So congratulations to Kai Ross. He'll be receiving a special delivery, a special delivery. Sean is down there, and he'll hopefully have a few cookies remaining for Kai and his teammates. I can't wait to see Sean out there on the field, too. Now, we just got word in her ear that there is a request that he run it over, <laughs> which I don't think that's going to happen. Franklin will run the football right the up the middle. The on the carry for the Brazilians, a gain of five, ball spotted at the 20-yard line. <laughs> Oh, that was Zane Downing out of Eastern Green. Yeah, everybody's getting involved now. Did somebody steal my roster? <laughs> I mean, what? You can't trust anybody in the press box anymore. No, hey, don't look at me. Yeah, it was on your side. <laughs> Wait a minute. How did this end up over there? Don't look at me. Nice carry, and another first down. Zane Downing on the carry. Downing once again, the sophomore, 5'7", 180 pounds. What a good feeling it is as a coach to see so many of your guys get involved in a game like this. You know, your first team offense is tremendous through three quarters. And then the fourth quarter, I mean, you're getting just relentless rotation, different guys subbing in and out. We have a new quarterback in also. It's Peyton Horsley. Another nice run out to the 45-yard line. They down on the carry, a gain of 11. Downing again, another Indiana product. 
You know, a lot of these guys were, of course, the stars on their team, and then they got to come to either Franklin or wherever, and they end up having to, you know, bide their time until that opportunity to get some extra playing time, and that's what's happening right now. Taking a quick glance over the roster, I've only counted so far three individuals not from Indiana on this Franklin squad. Another big run by Downing. Downing may end up with 60 or 70 yards in just the last couple of minutes of this game. You know, but players, you know, when you've played this game, if you're on the sidelines, you're just waiting to get an opportunity to show what you can do. And when you get in there, you're not going to let up at all. And Downing is doing just that. And you can't see it on the screen, but the two quarterbacks that we saw before in Kai Ross and Blake Shear, they have the headsets on now. And now they're delivering the plays to the new quarterback out there in Horsley. How about Downing? Inside the 25, down to about the 22-yard line. Now I keep feeding him too. Why not? Right? There's still plenty of time left. I mean, we could get... Downing with a touchdown. Cora as the running back has scored. Johnson scored a touchdown. Every running back that has gotten a touch is going to end up finding the end zone if Anderson isn't careful. You know, the music adds a different ambiance to the game. I feel like I'm in the NBA now. You yeah. Know, they always play music during every play and such. So first down. And once again... Downing will get the call, and he continues to drive his feet. He got to the 19-yard line. By the way, Sean has made his way. And once the two teams split after their final time together to talk and do whatever they will do to finish out the game here today, they will all gather, and he will make the presentation. And it does appear from where we are, all the cookies are still in the container. He's got the shades on, too. He's Sean Cool. Around the right side, another run by Downing. Hey, Downing on the chair. You know, I was a and little shocked uh, that on the play. Yeah. saw yeah. him and they, before we even started the broadcast, shoving and down on all those cookies over there, and he had it all over his shirt and everything, and that was shocked you too, didn't it? Yeah, it did. I, I told you, though. Well, actually, I didn't tell you. That's the thing. You, you were like, why didn't you tell me about Sean and all of his shenanigans? I'm like, well, I, I wanted to see how you would react. Well, I thought last week was a fluke because we had to get him out of the coach's box. He was hanging around there trying to tell them how to call plays, and then today... You know, he's stealing cookies. Downing again. And that's going to be a face mask. We could see that all the way up here, and three Jay other Downing officials did there, too. Four officials flag through their flag. The <laughs> I want to remind you again next week, it'll be Rolls Holman and Bluffton. I understand. I just got word that Sean is on the sidelines again next week. Hmm. Now he can't hear us, but I think that's a good spot for him. He can he can stay. He's done a good he's done a good job on the sideline today, which is normally Keith's spot, but Keith Keith wanted to take it easy this week. Yeah, well, it's his anniversary. What does he do? He comes to football. Dedicated to the game. He is. Downing again on the carry inside the five. That should be the hey, final the play carry, of, of this game. And where Franklin line. is going to win this contest. And they started out quick. They scored the first two touchdowns. One of those, of course, after a big interception. And Franklin, the final score, 54 to 14 for the Grizzlies. They improved to two and three on the season. They're now two and zero oh in the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference. Anderson will fall to zero oh and five overall. 
0-2 in conference play. And we thought maybe coming in that Anderson would have a difficult time putting points on the board because that's really been the case. Not able to run the football. That really hurt him again today. And when you give up the points early and fall behind the eight ball and you're not an explosive team, you have a hard time coming back. Yeah, you really do. It, it, was, it was all in the start. It, it's so difficult uh, against a team like Franklin, too. So difficult to come back in the fashion in which you were down. 14-0 after one, 31 to seven at halftime. Just too much to overcome, and you know, as an offense, the the defensive pressure that was applied by Franklin was relentless. It was coming from everywhere. It was coming from the middle. It was coming from the edge. Northfleet took a lot of hits today. Uh, I'm surprised he actually ended up finishing the game, and then you know, just in the trenches, not being able to win any of those battles. So you allow those defenders to get to your quarterback and it also you know you see a non-existent run game it's just not a good recipe for Anderson Franklin just too much I think too much speed too many athletes too many guys to have to worry about and all of those guys had an impact in some way multiple different guys scoring the football well for Anderson they'll have to regroup as you said uh, next week it will not get a whole lot easier. And then, of course, Franklin now with some momentum into their third game coming up next Saturday. So for Franklin and Kai Ross being named the player of the game today. And, you know, that young man, only a sophomore, and he played extremely well and, and certainly would when you think about being named the player of the game as they will go through the fight song. It was a homecoming Saturday for them and a great Saturday for the Grizzlies and Anderson will look to regroup and hopefully not too much said out there at midfield. There's a little bit of a scuffle going on between some of the players uh, between Anderson and Franklin, but uh, they'll get that all straightened out and tell everybody to go home and cool off. Thanks for being with us. The entire crew doing a fantastic job. We're getting, we got the cookie presentation somewhere in here, I think. But words are still being said between one another, and the coach is trying to get between everybody and get them separated. Odds are it's probably somebody who knew somebody on the other team uh, because a lot of these players are from Indiana, and maybe they met each other somewhere before in high school and just had something to say, like, have a pleasant afternoon. Yeah, so. yeah. Good, good to see you, but, uh, you know, we took care of business. Franklin, that is, and now they get to sing. I know Sean's just off to the left uh, waiting to make the presentation. I know a couple of the coaches there at midfield still discussing with each other what happened, but I think everything's okay between the coaching staff. And maybe Sean won't get to give away the cookies. It depends if he can track down Ross somewhere. But he has not yet. In fact, I think what his game plan is, is I couldn't find him. I'm going to take these home with me. Or he may have to literally go into the locker room to do it. Hmm. He's in that mess somewhere. All right, that's going to do it. want to thank you for joining us. Again, a great job by the entire crew here this afternoon. Franklin picks up the win, 54-14. This has been Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference football right here on Indiana SRN.